Welcome back to episode 198 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here with Troy, and I'm here with Phil. It's a Gong Show Super Show. I like that ring. I, I got to name <laughs> everything, right? So, uh, what do we think? Super Show? Does that work for everyone? Super Show is good. I like okay. Super Show. I'm I'm thrown off though because the last two times I've been out with Phil, he's been doing grooming the mustache as we started, and he did mm-hmm. do it this time. So now I'm all thrown <laughs> off. I did it just off camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got to check in with the boys. What's going on this weekend? So, Phil, I saw on Instagram, maybe text messages. I don't know what it was. Were you just on a golf trip? Is, is that the rumors true? Oh, yeah. No, I did a couple of stories on. Yeah, I went on a golf trip. I'm a non-golfer on a golf trip, or as I like to say, a boys trip with some golf in it. Yeah. Okay. We do it every, we do it every year. Uh, three, we, three of us, we can't find a fourth. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we drive out a few hours. They're married, so um, they they – they want to maximize their time away from their families because they miss them so much. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. But we have a blast. We have, I brought, uh, I brought a few boxes of pro set. We opened them up around the campfire. Uh, I got one nasty text message saying, or not or DM. I got a, a nasty DM saying I shouldn't be burning cards. And, and I agree with you. I agree with you, but um, I'm, I'm a little past the sanity uh, red line, you know, like it's, it's a love hate thing. So yeah, I'm allowed <laughs> yeah, to burn the you base flipping there. them into the fire. Now, maybe that's a sacrifice to the hockey card gods too. Yes. That's, oh, at- that's fantastic. Josh. That's no, absolutely uh, what I was doing. No Stanley cup hollow. No, nothing. Oh, I left no. about 20 packs out in the rain and we were laughing. I was scared oh. to open them. Yeah. I was scared to open them. I was like, if it's in here, what can you do? Mm-hmm. Eh? It's an obsession at this point, but uh, if you had to put a number on it, how many boxes of 1991 or 19, sorry, 1990 pro set series one have you opened in your life? Oh, in my life, I can't answer that truthfully, but I can tell you in my adult uh, years, basically the last four, uh, I've opened uh, four cases, four to six boxes. I lost track after um, the fourth case. Yeah. (laughs) So that I've, I've purchased three cases and the rest are just loose when I find Mm -hmm. them. Now, keep in mind, 20 boxes per case yeah yeah i don't want to age you but you just said in your adult years in the last four (laughs) years are you saying you've been an adult for four years (laughs) well that's up for debate i don't know depend don't call any ex-girlfriends there boys (laughs) (laughs) troy what's going on with you this weekend not a whole lot baseball game tonight no tournaments this weekend so that was good suffered through some more rain like we complain about all the time and that's about it. Me and you went uh, to a card shop or a couple card shops on Friday. Yep. And you bought some Pro Set 90, 90, 1990 Series 1 Pro Set. Josh got a box looking for that Stanley Cup card or the hologram. You will not get that. <laughs> you just drink it. Now you just can't make sure. I wanted to so bad. And I wanted, I just like, not even have the card. Like, I, I give you the card. Yeah. I don't want the card. But... I don't even like the card. <laughs> i don't even like the card i just want to f- uh, fulfill some childhood dream man i wasn't cool I, in elementary i just know? wanted to like i had it all planned out in my mind phil i wanted to send you the text and it was going to be third pack ever in a picture of the card oh, i would have collapsed i would have collapsed ridiculous what else josh you got another would you get select hockey select hockey or what did you i got a, a, a box for our secret expo project that's becoming less and less of a secret but we will <laughs> announce pretty soon Oh, and we did some planning on that, by the way, Phil. I'll tell you about it in a little bit. Ooh, and then exciting. I bought, so I would say 19 of 20 boxes I open, I do for our pack opening videos. Yeah. And sometimes I like to just get a box and not film it. Because yeah. it's not the same when you have like the breaker style camera. Yeah, in front I hate of you. filming it because I feel like I got to like be awkward position. Yeah, you don't camera. really. I hate it. Enjoy it to the degree that you do just opening a box of cards by yourself, right? That's part of being in the hobby and so i got i'm I always loved and you guys know this because i hunt it at the expo the 2021 22 upper deck ice yeah i like it because it's got ice premieres which i, I like acetate cards and ice premieres on a 99 although maybe not quite as popular as it was 10 15 years ago i still like the card then you got the 2020 bonus pack which could have our caprice off as a rookie so that's oh. always very enticing for us minnesota wild guys and then to Phil's delight, that's where you have the patch autos and the rookie patch autos with the exquisite O3. Yeah, tribute. there we go. And so I really think it's a good value because it's I think I paid like $125 for the box. And there was you got three legit sort of chases to for your money. And it was probably the worst box I've ever opened in my entire life. Yes, yeah, <laughs> keep it up. Keep it that's up. That's what you get. That's what keep you the get. Street going. 
was it was horrible. I mean, every rookie like doesn't even play in the NHL. <laughs> Owen, who I I always get from 2021. That's always impressive. Premieres. I got a Bernard Docker jersey. Oh, yeah. Right there. Well, you can have that. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm just I'm giving I'm away good. All, Like none of the guys ever. Um, Boris Kachuk ice premieres. How am I doing? Everybody <laughs> jealous really? yet? Uh, okay, there's some more. It gets more. Oh, then I got a, a David Ferrance ice premieres. How's that? Nice. It's 21, 22, eh? Yeah. Uh, oh, and then there was a thick card, and that's what you want to see, right? Because they put the decoys in 2021, 20, 22 ice. But then if you look sideways and you see the white, it's like, yeah, something good, right? Well, here's what I saw. Ooh, right? that looks good. good. Yeah. No. <laughs> Who is Tyro, Tyro Heroes? Who's that? Ah, uh, it sounds Greek. Heroes, Heroes. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So that is called flushing $125 down the toilet. It's nice. Legitimately, legitimately the best card I got. And this is sad. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll find it. Uh, I'm not going to look for it. It's What'd a you get in the pack. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, and the, I got like nothing in the. I got a like a. Oh, this one. I found it. Okay. The orange Byfield parallel. Orange is the good one in ice? No, uh, pink is. Uh, this is like the second one. Pink. This is maybe $3. I haven't looked it up. <laughs> no, how am i doing three dollars <laughs> and then i always oh, think because i do love opening wax but i'm always like i don't know if this crosses your guys's mind ever but i'm like for 125 bucks i could have yep. got a pretty sweet card you get or or 10 awesome cards that were low value but I, I do say i do like opening boxes and it was fun to just open one on my own without having to film it or do it for the show yeah. and it would have been nice if there's like a decent good card, but I'll get over it. <laughs> we we skunked out at uh, the expo. I bought well, I bought a box too. I didn't get anything. Hey, that ice twenty one point two. Don't. It, it, oh no, that's not true. <laughs> I got the golden treasures. The, okay, next segment. Next segment. Yeah, that I'm was so an allure, sorry. and then you got the Gretzky, <laughs> the Gretzky black, the black out of ten. <laughs> even stop, okay. Phil. Just stop. All right. Yeah, it, there's going to be more of your exploits later on. Yeah. Uh, one of the really a couple other really quick announcements is. 5k challenge so if you're part of our discord at the beginning of the year uh we kind of a game i guess you call it where we gave show supporters discord members a chance to win a box of 2020 21 the cup by entering our 5k challenge basically each participant made a list of up to 15 cards with their most recent comps totally no more than five thousand us dollars and then the whole idea is a day after the stanley cup finals ends who's ever picks are worth the most wins a box of the cup so we're going to begin tabulating that producer Louie is going to start tabulating <laughs> on Wednesday and we will announce the winner on Monday show next week. We're going to be shipping out a box of 2020, the cup. That's pretty exciting. Sweet. Lastly, oh, wait, wait, you got a comment? <laughs> I was going to say, I was thinking about Louie doing that. Does he need the gong show supercomputer? Do we got to find that thing? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he, he seems to have it under on. control. It's not a lot of fun, so very appreciative of him to going through and comping all those cards. Then lastly, before we get started, just a reminder, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a Patreon podcast. That means we rely on supportive listeners like yourself to help us cover our show expenses, produce more, and, well, we hope better, better hockey card content and fund initiatives, even in a small way to grow the hobby. It's very easy to support us. You can join our 199 support level tier via Patreon by going to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com, clicking on the Become a Patron link, Going to the Patreon website directly, p a t r e o n dot com, and searching for Hockey Cards Gong Show. You can find a link in the show description if you're listening to us on a podcast app or watching on YouTube. And then finally, in our Instagram and TikTok profiles there too. It starts at five dollars a month. You get access to our Discord server. We have an amazing community there. I love hanging out with everyone and a lot of good hockey card discussion every day. It's kind of crazy how that's taken a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And guys, since our last episode, we have three new members. That's pretty awesome. Oh. That's a pretty good uh, few days for us. We have uh, Mike DeStefano out of 199, Mad Dog Nav 78 out of 199, and Sprad out of 199. I'm Thank sorry? Thank you guys very, very much, Sprad. Okay. Yeah. 
So it's like Brad with SP at the front. Yeah, I got it. Just, Thanks, Troy. <laughs> I was so close to not with my inside voice not going outside. Hey, I right. gotta help everyone because I uh, myself included, I never know anything. <laughs> What's this? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. Really appreciate your support. And with that, Troy, let's uh, kick off the game plan and start going with our show. All right. We begin today's show with the almost greatest NHL player to wear number 98. We then take a look at the pivotal hobby moment that is ahead of us with tonight's Stanley Cup Final Game 7. Next, it's hobby news, followed by a segment on how to make the hobby a better place. We then take a look at new product releases. This is followed by the Gong Show Mailbag. And any personal pickups, Josh was the mailbag of record. I felt like I opened 800 pictures. <laughs> it, for the third week in a row, tied for the record. <laughs> it's fantastic. Hey, okay. okay, so so Phil, wait, wait, before you get started. Yeah. yeah. Have you wrapped your head yet around Phil, the fourth wall, the Stanley Cup Finals Game 7 tonight? There's oh, yeah. be a lot of references to that. Yeah, it, it's this evening. Um, yes. uh, future, future Phil's doing good, right? <laughs> future, future Phil's, Phil's doing, doing good. good. Okay. okay right. good. Just want to make sure that before we get rolling here, cause there's going to be a yeah. lot of game seven tonight talk. Okay. Yeah. It's good. I watched all of game <laughs> six today. No, okay. I watched all of game six, two days ago. Nice. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Try to get me a eh, Josh. I got it. I got it. <laughs> all right. Try. Sorry. Okay. Previously, we looked at the greatest NHL player that wore the number that matched our episode number. We ran through the numbers, so now we are now. Oops, sorry, I just doubled on top. Ugh. We ran through all the numbers, so now we are looking at the almost greatest NHL player to wear each number from the runners up in the hockey writers' greatest NHL player to wear each number article. The almost greatest NHL player to wear number eight. Eight. I give up. What? Ninety-eight. Per the nominees in the Hockey Writers Greatest NHL Player to Wear Each Number article and selected by me is this guy. It's Jeremy Roenick. No. Oh. Brian Lawton. Who's and that? Now, oh, you're going to find out who that is. I so kind of any, any North Stars or Minnesota hockey fan should know who Brian Lawton is. We're all right now getting PTSD because we're remembering about him. And I will explain what's going on with Mr. Brian Lawton here. So, again, North Star fans, we're going to relive some depressing times <laughs> with Lawton, but it's okay. We'll get through this together. Isn't there it funny, no though, that we're on the yeah. greatest player to wear number 98? Stop it, Kobe. And <laughs> we're talking about and we go right from there into depressing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to let everyone know that we're Minnesota sports fans and things stink. Okay. There were no other runners up at number 98. And here's a fun fact about the number 98 per the website, hockeyreference.com. Only seven players have ever worn number 98 in NHL history. As a reminder, the greatest wear number 98 was Mikhail Sergachev. And yes, Connor Bedard does wear number 98. So I'm assuming this number is prime for him to take over. I wonder if he'll jump just straight to the greatest tour number 98 since he's always been anointed, but this number is Bedard's for the taking. If he can uh, keep going at the, the rate, he seems like he's going to progress. Well, but we don't care about like 26 goals. No, he had 22 goals. How, how is he not the <laughs> player to wear number <laughs> yeah. 98? No, no kidding. Well, the, the guys above him got a couple more goals than him. Okay. So our boy, Brian Lawton, here we go. Left winger born in New Brunswick, New Jersey but raised in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Lawton was selected first overall in the 1983 NHL entry draft by the Minnesota North Stars. He was first? First, first overall. overall. Oh, and he's boy, not just a wait, he gets man. better. You he, wait he's a bust. He, he's a okay. bust. Just wait till you hear who he's drafted over. Lawton played in 483 regular season NHL games over a nine-season NHL career. Lawton played his first five seasons with the North Stars. He would then go on to spend time with the New York Rangers, Hartford Whalers, Quebec Nordiques, Boston Bruins, and San Jose Sharks. Woo. The only cool thing about all the teams he's played for is that at least he got to play for the North Stars, the Whalers, and the Nordiques. That's pretty cool. I, I should have looked up if there's any other players or how many players have played for those three franchises. It's That's cool now, cool. Troy, but it definitely wasn't cool back then. <laughs> no, it wasn't cool back then. <laughs> Your dad plays for the NHL team. Which one? Uh, I'd rather not say. <laughs> That's all, that all right. For his awards and accomplishments, absolutely nothing. 
No individual hardware, no Stanley Cups, nothing like that. For his career, 112 goals, 154 assists for 266 points. Lawton made the playoffs in three of his nine NHL seasons, compiling one goal, one assist for two points in 12 (laughs) NHL playoff games played. All right. Best regular season of Lawton's career from a point standpoint was his 86-87 season where Lawton had 21 goals, 23 assists for 44 points in 66 games played with the North Stars. So here we go. When we're talking about Brian Lawton, it will always be brought up. Phil already just mentioned it just by (laughs) knowing he was a first overall pick, that he's one of the biggest draft busts in NHL history. Probably not the top, but he's in the top 10 for sure. He looks American. Is he American? Right. I know you already yeah. said that. Yeah, from uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah, he has and... got an American look to him. <laughs> wait, I mean, wait, what's an American, American look? look? I don't know. He's kind of looks uh, like at first I thought Me. that was Mike Medano, but it's not oh, Mike Medano. It's Brian Lawton. So there maybe that's why I thought he looked American because I think because I know Medano's American. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Like my subconscious. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Troy, keep going. Well, I'll just say here now. So we, you know, Lawton, one of the biggest busts in NHL history. In fact. A lot of pundits say if the North Stars wouldn't have, uh, they wouldn't have moved <laughs> if they hadn't drafted him. <laughs> That's <the> horrible. North- <laughs> well, listen, if the North Stars could have ended up with a Hall of Fame player selected <laughs> after him, which there were some, maybe the, that changes the trajectory of the North Stars' history and they stay in Minnesota. Listen, it's a stretch. Yeah. I get it. Maybe you could get there some way, but again, that's just kind of one of the things that adds to the whole Brian Lawton being a bus. Does everybody uh so is Brian Lawton a household name in Minnesota? Because people know yeah. like is he at like yeah. Alexander Dig in Ottawa, right? Same thing. Yeah. I think well, most of his age. Uh, do you think a 15 year old knows who Brian Lawton is? No, 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 no. Yeah, you know, for the people our age for sure. But here's the deal. Here, so let's let's look at this. Here's a list of some of the players selected after Lawton. Who remember Lawton was selected first overall in the 83 NHL entry draft. So the number two pick, Sylvain Turgeon, oh. only had 296 goals, Trump. 226 assists for 495 points. Number three pick, Pat Lafontaine, 1,013 points in the Hall of Fame. Number Loser. four pick, Steve Eiserman, 1,755 points in the Hall of Fame. Didn't number need five him. pick, didn't need him. Number five pick, Tom Barrasso, goalie Hall of Fame. Number yeah. six pick, psychopath too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number six pick, John McLean. McLean. McLean? McLean? I can never say McLean. McLean. Yeah, 842 points. Die Hard's Number a Christmas seven. movie. <laughs> yes, that's where I get. I always John get McLean. Yeah. John <laughs> McLean. Number seven pick, Russ Courtnall, 744 points. Number nine pick, Cam Neely, 694 <laughs> points in the Hall of Fame. So that was the <laughs> next picks after him. That is I, wild. Uh, wild. I think I left out eight because I don't think. I can't remember who it was, but yeah. So there was one, two, three Hall of Famers picked in the top 10, all after Brian Lawton. Now, other notable names in this draft, Claude Lemieux at number 26. Me. I don't think, yeah. Kevin Stevens at number 108, and Rick Tockett at number 121. Kevin Stevens, oh. super underrated. Super yeah. duper underrated, yeah. Point machine. So, Boy, the uh, Iserman one hurts, though, huh? Yeah, the yeah. Eisenhower. Yeah. Like, even Pat LaFontaine. I mean, come on. If you want yeah. to go the American route, let's at least get a guy that can make Sylvain Turgeon, I know you guys laugh, but Sylvain Turgeon, like, he, I mean, he was a little sensitive and delicate, but he was amazing. Oh, Same I with Pierre. Him as a kid. His brother was even better, but then when Dale Hunter schmuckered him, he's never, yeah. he was never the same. I think it was, was Hunter. Pierre? Pierre Turgeon. Pierre Turgeon. Yeah, he yeah. was phenomenal, man. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. I, I do have breaking news, guys. Ooh, Sorry to let's go. jump in. So I contacted my friends at the artificial intelligence robot world. Uh-oh. And according to them, a couple other guys that played for not only the North stars, but the whalers and the Nordiques. Oh, nice. are Mark, oh no. Mark Tardiff. Oh, okay. John Cordick, and, maybe. No, the other uh, one they listed is I'm going to butcher so bad, Phil, and you get ready to laugh. Put on your yeah. laugh face. Yeah. yeah. Randy. La do sir. La do sir. La das, Yeah. <laughs> La Framboise, Randy Ladisser. I yeah. guess that'd be the English name. Ladisser would be. Uh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. And then Brian Lawton. So those okay. three are the most notable. They said the computer machine got lazy. It said with the exact number of players who played for the Minnesota North Stars, Quebec Nordiques, and Hartford Whalers can be challenging to pinpoint. 
It's like, well, that's the point of you, AI machine. Right? It's like, I don't want that to one job, work. AI machine. And you what a polite way to make fun of you. That's fantastic. Wisdom has been chasing you your whole life, Troy, but you have been too quick. <laughs> All right. Lawton would end up ranked 30th for most points scored by a 1983 NHL draft player. Okay. Here he is. Lawton retired in 1993, but remained active in the NHL. After retiring, he started Lawton Sport and Financial and represented 12 players in the NHL as their agent. Notable clientele included Mike Madano. There goes. There's the connection. Sergey Fedorov and Ryan Malone. He would go on to become Octagon's managing director for hockey and helped Octagon become the second largest hockey agency in the NHL. On June 25th, 2008, Lawton was then named the vice president of hockey operations for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Lawton would then be named the general manager of Tampa Bay on October 2nd, 2008. Lawton was removed from the GM role on April 12th, 2010. And I believe he was replaced. I believe he was replaced by Iserman, if I remember right. Does that sound right? That sounds right to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Lawton went on to do work for the NHL Network until December of 2023. Wait, so were I, the Esposito brothers? Was that Florida or Tampa Bay? That's no, Florida. That was, that was no, I think Florida. it was Tampa Bay. Was it Tampa Bay? Well, I, I know think. Phil Esposito was. Oh crap! No, I'm screwing that up. I thought I they were both Tampa involved Bay. in that. And then the other question I have is, you pretty much have to be a lawyer to be an agent, right? So he must have went and got back his law degree. Um, he did. I think he went to St. Thomas. I don't know if you check. No, you don't have to be a lawyer. I don't think you do have to pass a certification though. I think there's like an NHL PA or maybe an NHL certification for agents to be like a certified agent. Um, and I just smart. lost my train of thought. I he looks smart. Yeah. He looks he, happy uh, too. Well, he's like, he's one of those guys that probably was a little more successful <laughs> as a, as an executive role or yeah. a, in his post career role as like an agent and all that. But remember like last show, we found out Drew Doughty, did his own like there's a couple players that do their own contracts which i what love. drew doughty does his own yeah. contract he's a cave he negotiated- what does he do the chisel does he chisel <laughs> at the wall at his cave he, he negotiated his his last sign his last signing deal it was because i was looking i found a website where you could look up all the agents and who has the most players and then for some reason i saw drew doughty listed as an agent i'm like what and so i went and looked and yep he negotiated his like whatever it was 11 year 88 million dollar deal or something his last deal that was big and he's like well i figured i'd do it myself and save myself the fees because agents get i don't know what it is three three and a half percent i don't know what standard is sounds like a realtor anyways but that's brian Lawton. we got some fun interesting facts for him first player in nhl history to wear number eight 98 i mentioned that before i don't know why i keep saying eight he wore the number for two seasons in 1984 85 Lawton wanted to wear number nine, but it was taken by veteran North Stars player Dennis Marouk, who was awesome. (laughs) The New Jersey native then chose 98, which he came to regret. Lawton earned the unfortunate nickname Notch, which meant he was a notch below the number 99. (laughs) Dirty. That's brutal. The ribbing would be relentless when the North Stars played the Edmonton Oilers. Oh Lawton would eventually switch to number eight. That's probably why I keep seeing it. And ended up bouncing between a ri- wide variety of numbers. He would wear 11, 17, 7, 29, and finally his favorite number nine in his only season with the San Jose Sharks. So that's this, that's our first. This could be a Judd a Judd uh, Apatow movie, like you know what I mean? Yes. Like he's all like it just it, the picture you have on the screen. He looks kind of goofy, you know. He's always yeah. behind Wayne. Wayne's always the best. He's just one <laughs> notch below. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I love that's it. A pretty brutal nickname. What a bust! Lawton, oh man, yeah. <laughs> Lawton was the first U.S. born hockey player. That doesn't seem right. Is that right? Drafted first overall in the NHL draft. Probably. He was also the first and only USA US high school player to be drafted first overall. I knew really? that one. What yeah. about Phil Housley? I thought Phil Housley was drafted first overall. I yeah, but I, I don't think Housley. I see that's why I think I screwed up on the, the US. I have to look that one up. For sure, he's the first high school player or only I think he's the only US hmm. high school player to be taken number one, if I remember right. St. Paul's Phil Housley. Saint, yes, you're right. St. Paul, Minnesota. No, Halsey was sixth overall. So that's oh. fine. And finally, we're, we got to give him a little props, I guess. Lawton set 
the mark for the North Stars franchise for fastest two goals scored by a rookie at 19 seconds in 1983. So there you go. Got, Sounds like his career record. high, career high there, yeah. career yeah. moment. Oh, he peaked early. He peaked early. <laughs> he peaked early. I mean, at least he stuck around for nine seasons. I guess I, I'll give him that. Well, I hear okay. they pay. I hear they pay well. Their minimum wage is not bad in the NHL, even in the eighties. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, true. All right, here's this rookie card, nineteen eighty-seven OPC number one forty-five. PSA ten has a pop of twenty-eight, which was a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. Gem rate of 67%. And actually, the sales of this card are pretty good. Last sale of this card was on April 7th of this year for $143.50 US via eBay. Verified Terra Peak. Previous sale before that was on March 21st, 2024 for 96. That's you and Louis. You and Louis are competing (laughs) with That's why the numbers look good. It's the same three people. (laughs) Yeah, take it it for a grain of salt. I'm guessing the $90 range is more appropriate than the $143, but... Hey, hey, Troy, this card matches our reverse retro studio. You notice that? It does. It does. Okay, I got a a really big question about this, though. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out what the hockey hobby was like in the early to mid-80s. Here you got the number one overall pick. Started his career in 1983, and his rookie card is 1987? (laughs) <laughs> oh did i oh uh, troy on. come on <laughs> hold on i am not today this is, is why not, i don't want any today. i don't I want any responsibility <laughs> i need it yes yeah, so he was a rookie in 83 84 that was his rookie season and then oh my gosh this is just on here we go <laughs> on your production meeting all right if you know what that means, <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's my favorite. Looks like a sticker. Yeah. On you just screen. turned the card into a like a Parkhurst mini there, Troy. Oh Ooh. yeah, because it's, it's here's what's happening when I'm zooming in on TCDB. It affects the page that I had up earlier. So now this one's all screwed up. This Wait, other so page. Is all screwed what up. what is happening right now? What what are you trying to find out? I'm well, trying, trying to find out, out if you made, if you made and a now training database or training guard database just crashed. So I'm done. That's that's all we got on Latin. I'll find out what's going on with that. Is it database or database? You guys say database? Data. Database. It's, oh, so it's, so it's a potato, 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 potato. 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 Well, it's not potato. Anyone who says potato <laughs> concerns me. I never understand that thing. <laughs> well, I, I, Troy, I'm seeing, I just searched search fire it? ladder and it says Brian Lawton rookie and what comes up is 1987. OPG. There we go. There you go. Trust the research, is, Troy. That's wild, though, yeah. that only in, like, the 80s in the hockey hobby would the number one draft pick's first rookie card. You know, we just yeah. were talking about Connor Bernardo <laughs> had 1,300 rookies his first year. Yeah, and the number one pick in 83 gets a rookie card four years later. Well, yeah. Brett Hall, Brett Hall's card was late, too, right? Three, four years, I think. Was that like the that. bad Photoshop yeah. one? It's not even Photoshop. Yeah, well, the, the, the flames or whatever they do. <laughs> I don't like that card. Yeah. It just shows you that uh, I'm assuming that the hobby probably or the manufacturers probably put much higher emphasis on veterans than rookies back then. Yeah, mm. Interesting. Right. There we good go. Point. All right. Good job, Troy. Huh. Yeah. Right. See, you didn't, you need to trust yourself, man. You were right all along. Yeah. Yeah. Talk trust, the research, Troy. The trust yourself. Good <laughs> job, all right, Phil, are you ready for this today? Phil today yeah. yes. is truly a pivotal hobby moment. Okay. In what just a few days ago, guys, seemed like completely improbable. Yep. We now have a game seven in the Stanley Cup finals. Which is yeah. Yeah. With their win on Friday night, Edmonton became the first NHL team in almost 80 years to force game seven after trailing 3 0 in the finals. So prior to this year, it hadn't been done since 1945. So, Phil, you just said that you watched the game. What were your key yeah. takeaways? Uh, you know, it was it was good. It was it was it was a great game. I I feel like everyone who's talking about it after, we're all just happy Edmonton won. But when it comes to the game itself, eh, it was an average playoff game. It was a great game, but I, I we're all wanting to like it a little bit more. I mean, I like game two was ten times better. You know, like, do you think that Kachuk or Kachuk diving for the puck it was that? Yeah, I was a little. I was a little bit much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit I, much. And I'm a big Kachuk fan too. I felt, you know, Barkov. Uh, he's my guy. Um, I was really upset when they uh, they called that offside. Like we're in the Stanley Cup playoffs and we're we're zooming in on an inch. Oh, like, that yeah. was ridiculous. That's a, that's a that was, goal. That's a yeah, goal. That was what? that was you hard know. to stomach. That was. I know, but they got to use the tools to their disposal. Yeah. They can call it. it it's 
it's just a tough one, right? There's, I think that's just a crappy situation uh, for one team and not for the other. Was I the only one who thought Skinner looked absolutely shaky in the first period? Like he, he always looked like, shaky. He looks he's like always he was like stumbling, falling over. Pucks you just got to be like Grant Fuhrer. Just be good enough, yeah. right? Just be yeah. good enough. That's all he had to yep. be. That's all Skinner had to do, well, right? That's that's becoming a prevailing thought in hockey circles about goalies. Is that's, that you just you just seem to be good enough? I hate that. Can... I hate that. No, no, that's <laughs> that's society right now in culture, yeah. right? What who gets rewarded? Weak people and whiners. No, 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 no. <laughs> come on, the pursuit of excellence needs to come back. Let's get Broder. Let's get Patrick Waugh. We want to be the best, right? We want that. To... Troy, you like uh, you like guys that are show offs and can back it up. Oh, you know for sure. I mean? Yeah, yes. exactly. We want that. We want that. I don't want somebody who's just good enough. Get out of I'm here. I'm telling you, Phil, any USA college hockey fans from the 90s, there was a goalie for Denver. Yeah. Uh, Walla Heimo was his last name. That guy would make a save, turn to the student section, show them the puck, bang on the glass. <laughs> it was just awesome. Really? Like, I, I, need, good, I need a goalie I like it. that. I yeah. Like that. Well, well, I kind of miss the, the 90s when he had like Hashik, right? The Dominator. Yeah, where uh, it's a story in every game was, can you beat this guy? Yeah, we had him for a year. Otto had him for a year. It was yep. great, man. I saw him play live at least eight, eight nine times. I can say. Yeah. My biggest takeaway from Friday night's game had nothing to do with the game itself. It was the fans. Oh, the people crazy, in Edmonton right? are going are, are really. I mean, you. I don't really care because I, I don't have a horse in the race on either team. Yeah. It is pretty cool to see people that happy. Oh man, Canadian market, yeah, absolutely. You see the, uh, you see the the <laughs> the blonde behind the bench, wasn't she at the Dallas game too? The, well, it's not uh, that same one. The attractive lady, yes, oh, yes, yeah. yeah, it was funny. Always, always behind the bench, eh? It's so good. The game's got saw, everything for everyone. <laughs> I saw someone posted a, it was like a, a a video or a tweet from a bar in Toronto, and all the Toronto people in there were going, "Let's go Edmonton," and he just puts yeah. in, "Have some." Have some respect, Toronto fans, or something. And I just—they don't laughing. know what that. They don't know what's going on over there. They're confused. They're—they're they're speaking a trauma. You know, like they, they have no idea what's going on. Are we keeping Barner? I don't know. I love him so much. I'll hate mail to Phil. Well, yeah. tonight will be the 18th Game Seven in Stanley Cup history. There's nothing better than That's Game it? Seven in the Stanley Cup Finals. Wow. Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa! 18th. Can you say that again? The 18th Game Seven. In Stanley Cup Finals history tonight. That's insane. I thought I thought that'd be way more than that. No. Wow. I assume everybody's watching. You don't have baseball, do you, Troy? Yes, I do have baseball. <laughs> we oh have a game. Boy. Oh boy. We have um a game, I think, every night because of all the rain we've gotten, which has been awesome. Flip the keys Maybe to should... the kids, take themselves. You got, you, got <laughs> you got daddy's got history to watch. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Listen, oh. Troy, you can't miss this. I, I know. You, you, I know. You, you can't. Listen, man, in 15, 20 years when we're talking about this, if if Edmonton wins, if they actually win, McDavid never has to win another cup for the rest of his life. It's much harder to build a dynasty now. He'll be, McDavid never has to win another cup the rest of his life to solidify absolute uh, once-in-a-lifetime generational player, and he backed it up and he proved it. He's just got to yeah. hoist it that one time. It's all he's got to do. Russell. And the Russell. hobby. And, and all the all the pray. Just when you think his cards can't go higher, right? Just when you think his cards can't go <laughs> higher, they're going to go higher. And as they should. As they should. Especially my Parker's Champions uh, patch auto. There you go. That one's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, not only for the NHL, for fans and the teams, of course, but there's a lot on the line tonight for the hobby as well. Yeah. So we'll, we'll cover both sides of the coin here. And we'll start with Florida quick first. Here, here's where I'll start. In my opinion, if Matthew Kachuk is ever going to get to hobby star status, like even close to on par with like a Jack Hughes or Kirill Kaprizov or Kale McCarr to that tier, he has to win tonight. Like it's never going to happen if they, and it still might not happen even if they do win. But do you guys agree or or disagree with that? And we'll start with Phil. Phil, you're the uh, the Kachuk family fanboy. So <laughs> well, what are your thoughts on this? How adorable of you. As an audio show, if you're, I'm laughing because Josh has put a very funny picture uh, on the screen of a very handsome, bald, big mustache man with a <laughs> hairless cat on his shoulder. <laughs> and, 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 and per AI wonky, can never do anything right the first time. I wanted Chuckster on the jersey, and they spelt it backwards. <laughs> backwards. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Ah, it's valiant effort. Valiant effort. Yeah. Um, 
What was the question again, sir? <laughs> so what I said, it's a, if, if Matthew Kachuk, brother Matthew. Oh, I remember everything. You don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. I remember everything. Okay, so I don't think Matthew Kachuk is ever. I think Matthew Kachuk could win two cups in a row with Florida this year. Let's say he won last year and he wins this year. I don't think maybe 10, 15% higher on his cards. He doesn't have a likable face. He doesn't have really? a likable game. No one collects PK Subban. He has a punchable face. No one collects <laughs> Nazem Kadri. He has a punchable face, right? They don't, and they, oh, there we go. One played for the Habs, one played for the, um, and the Quebecers go crazy. They love their cards. And you never see Subban guy, you never see Hab guys going after Subban cards. I'm sure you guys got, you got some in the vault somewhere, but they're probably sure. pretty quiet about it, right? I'm just, I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone's ever going to collect Matt Kachuk. I don't think so. He's like Brady. I mean, I collect Brady. They're different. Matt Kachuk's too much of a little scoundrel, a little weasel, you know? So, I love so in your opinion, Brady doesn't have a punchable face? And oh, Brady does. has a super punchable face, but you're going to break his, your hand on his face, which in turn makes you <laughs> respect him, especially to his face, right? Brady's got yeah. more, um, Brady's got more, uh, ah, for the lack of a better word, class, maybe. He's a little more refined than uh, Matthew. And neither of them are refined in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, I don't yeah. know. Brady's oh, got more... I like Matthew because he's got the the hobby heel, right? And like WWE mm -hmm. wrestling, you need to have that enemy, and he plays the bit like really, really yeah. well. And so it kind of surprises me that for that reason that there isn't more of a. Of I, a agree. I don't know, Troy. Do, do, are you on? Do you buy Phil's punchable face argument? I think I agree with Phil that he's probably not going to be a hobby. <laughs> he's not going to get move up his market with a couple of cups. He has got like a punchable face. I do agree with Phil on that when you see him, especially when he's not your player. If you're a Florida fan, you love him, right? But if you're yeah. anyone else, any other team, you hate him. He's got a punchable face. So I agree. At the mouth guard dangling out of yep. his mouth 24 what? 7. Yeah, and he's a bit of a liability personality wise, right? Like, remember what happened with uh, yeah. my team in the, in the taxi cab and like they're shooting their mouth off? Um, oh, who was it? You just talked about it the other show, not Percy. Oh, um, yeah, I can't remember. It's, I, I, it doesn't matter. Um, and he was shooting his mouth off, and he's really outgoing. And Matthew Kachuk, super outgoing, doesn't care, does what he wants, don't care. You know, maybe he's a bit of a liability, right? Like, oh, did you hear what happened Friday night at the bar with Matt? <laughs> like, no, but yeah, <laughs> you know, cards tank. I don't know. May maybe that's I'm just being a little conspiracy on that. Sure, a uh, more punchable face, Phil, Matthew Kachuk, or heater. I would drop Peter in a heartbeat. <laughs> uh, and he's a big dude. I wouldn't be scared. What's what's the worst that happens? He beats me up. I'll just keep going back. <laughs> all right, all right. No, he doesn't well, right, me. Here's a really quick look at what's happened over the last couple of weeks in the Matthew Kachuk hobby market. So his 2016 17 Young Guns PSA 10 is up something like 0.5%. So pretty flat. There, There's only been 11 total sales. So nothing crazy. Like something like under one per day. The volume of sales seems to be up, though. So if you look at card ladder sales history, the total number of Matthew Kachuk cards purchased on the secondary markets is up 64% month to date over last month. That's good. So people are buying them, but prices staying the same. The other guy I wanted to check in on quick is Officer Bob, of course, Sergey Bobrovsky. His Young Guns PSA 10 has seen more of an increase, but it's based on very few sales. It's got like a pop count of 108 so there's not going to be a flooded market or anything oh, they, like if that. If they lose the next sale, this card's going to be like 50 bucks. <laughs> well, okay, but it's going to get interesting in a second here. When looking at the volume of total cards sold, there's been a huge spike in the interest of Bobrovsky. So again, looking at month over month, his public sales volume is up 262% mm. so far in June. Also, so far this month, and maybe this gets back to Phil's point on Matthew Kachuk, more Sergei Bobrovsky cards have sold on the secondary market than Matthew Kachuk cards. Does that surprise either of you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it really surprised me. That's crazy. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So there's been like Officer Bob cards, like 241 sold the May 1st through May 22nd last month, of course. And then it's like up to almost 900 this month so far. Wow. Wow. So a lot of interest in, in Officer Bob. Uh, is there any other guys? I, those are the two that I figured were most notable. On Barkov, Florida. no, Barkov gets no love, man. Like, come on, the whole world should know. Look, look how poised he is. That's the best word. He's such a poised player. It's fantastic. Yeah, but it, it, like, with, <laughs> yeah. 
completely never translates to the hobby though because no, like you hear people say that i i've heard players make the comment that he's the best player in the league he's amazing i'm telling you he i think he's better than dry settle i said it i said it <laughs> well the and one I thing really... you can say speaking of dry side a little bit is that on the defensive side it, and i think the analytics back this up that he is pretty much shut down yeah the top player of every team so far this playoffs Listen, I like Dry Sidle too, but he, I don't know, there's, I don't know, maybe he, he's, he's a little, he's just a little too cool. Like you're not Brad Pitt, you know, like he's just a little bit trying to be too cool. So here's the Barkoff. It's actually taking a nice little run here the last. Since Look at June. that. Hey, boy, Sasha. Go, go. Is he Russian? He's Russian, Russian, eh? Yeah, let me do, let me do the like last one. No, Eastern. no, no. I think, is he Russian, Russian or is he Finnish? Eastern Russian? Europe? Oh, he's Finnish, Russian? I believe he's Finnish, Russian. Interesting. I thought maybe if he's Russian, Russian, that's why I like. Uh, yeah, he's there from, you go. He's from Scandinavian. Finland. He's not even Russian. Well, but but there's that part of like that with the Finland yeah, like, borders. Where the, yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm trying to. I don't know. I, I hear what you. you're saying. I got you. Too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why do they call him Sasha? Anyone know that? Uh, Sylvain knew. Sylvain knew why. I forget. Alexander okay. Barkov. Nah, can't figure it out. All right. But OK, let, let's talk about the Oilers for a minute. So. You kind of already alluded to it, Phil. This is a huge moment tonight for the yeah. McDavid hobby, hobby legacy. Biggest moment by far, right? Yep. To this point. Yep. And it's crazy how fast the narrative has changed in just over three, three games, like a week, right? Wild. When they were on the brink of elimination. Because of that, because of the fact that they crawled from being on the verge of being swept to now going to game seven, do you guys think that the hobby world or hockey world goes easier on Connor McDavid if they lose tonight than, than if they would have been swept? No, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters at all. It's win, win or nothing. Oh, Troy's on mute. <laughs> Every time he doesn't even know. Oh, he does. He's laughing now. <laughs> there I am. I was going to say, I agree with you 100%, Phil. Yes, our, the hobby does not care that they won a couple of games. Like, no, he'll still be, I don't know, chastised or can't win the big one, all that stuff. Will yeah, the happen. questions will be there, right? Yeah. There but I think the... I think the opposite is true. If he wins, then they came back four games in a row. Yes. Oh, baby. I'm telling you, they're going to skyrocket. They're, You're he, the leader. You yeah. got us to the He's promised the land. King. He is King McDave. McJesus will be solidified. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, to, to your point, Phil, the hobby seems to be heating up Ooh. to the idea of McDavid hoisting Lord Stanley Cup. Over the past couple of weeks, the market value of his Young Guns PSA oh, 10 hoisting. Up 24%. Wow. wow. Now, Troy and I, we were talking a couple weeks ago. This was like yeah, itching at like to get below. Right there, that 2000 mark. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also been an increase in total cards sold on the secondary markets as well. So up 32% so far in June versus May. I think this goes to like 4,000 if they win today. What, is Young Gun? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. At least yeah, one or probably. two sales. Well, crap, I don't want it to. I ha I want one. I don't really <laughs> care. I don't really. I mean, I do, but I don't. I don't really care. It's all right. Okay, let's move on to Dry Settle real quick. He, who has not had the greatest Stanley Cup finals. I'm a big Dry Settle guy. I, I'm, I, I started to feel like he's a little too crabby, which is one thing I don't really <laughs> love. But uh, unfortunate for me, he hasn't played well. He's got three points in six games played, all apples. Hobby market's been a little tepid over the past couple of weeks. Where we can see is Young Guns PSA 10 sales are about flat. I think they're down 1%. Selling, it's the card selling for like 620 US at the moment. His Young now, Gun? While, yeah. Okay. Now, while Dry Saddle's hobby values, of course, are not breaking records right now, like with the other guys we've already covered, the total volume of cards sold so far in June is up quite a bit, 41% as compared to May. And then there's a handful of other Oilers guys that I think we could see a Stanley Cup hobby jump if Edmonton does win game seven. So these are guys like Evan Bouchard, uh, our boy Stewie Skins. <laughs> of course, we can't forget about Zach Hyman for our yeah. guys. So man, <laughs> who, uh, went in very deep on Zach Hyman cards lately. I wouldn't buy any of these guys, man. I wouldn't buy any of these guys. Cause like I, I lived through a lot of years of Ottawa having great teams. We made it to the finals one year. We don't talk about that, but like always a good run in the playoffs, always a strong regular season. So always your, you know, your second line center, your third line center, all the guys that bring you deep into the playoffs that are in the moment. You're like, yeah, they're really good. Zach Hyman. And oh, so going to kill me for saying that name. 
Uh, let's pick someone else. Who else should I pick? <laughs> and another um, top Nugent guy, Hopkins. How about Nugent there we Hopkins? Go. A, a, how about, guy, how about a, Brad Slyman? A guy <laughs> excelling in the playoffs, and he, and the name is very abundant right now in circles because it's the finals. Stay away from buying those, those players right now. I'm telling you, no one's going to remember in friggin' February next year, guys. Yeah. I you agree know. with that, unless you're, of course, PC and maybe you're an Edmonton. Well, yeah, that's different. That, that's, that's, that's different, though. That's different. And, and, that's different. and I think guys like this, if they do win, are going to have a hobby spike, but it'll be very short lived. Like, yeah. the time to live on it, you have to be, you got to get out. There's no getting in and then getting yeah. out. There's only getting out, I, I think, at yeah, this point. Big time. So, uh, aside from Bouchard or Skinner, Hyman, anyone else you, you guys can think of that could have any upside on the Oilers, like Nurse or. New Jer, no. Darnell Nursex lost half the time too out on the ice. Mm-hmm. See, Ekblad getting in uh, some kerfuffles there the other day. Oh yeah. And then just talking about like a little bit of hobby strategy here for a second before we wrap this up. So if you got if you have some McDavid's or Kachucks or any nice cards of guys that could win it tonight, my advice if you're inclined to sell is to sell fast. Yeah, right? you know, last year was not a great indicator when Vegas won because there wasn't really a hobby chase on Vegas. Yeah. A lot of people wanted to think that Jack Eichel was, but he really hasn't been for a very long time. Yeah, well, Mark Stone, go, no one cares. Yeah, when you go back the year before though to Colorado and look at sales for the week after the Avalanche won the cup, McCarr and McKinnon cards were going crazy and for yeah. huge amounts like the the I think in many cases, the highest their markets have ever been. And so when, when we're talking the likes of dry or McDavid, particularly on the Edmonton side, it's going to be a seller's market and it's going to be one week, maybe two, because again, if you go back and you look at that Colorado win, while those guys car, while McKinnon's and cars cars went nuts for a couple of weeks by August 1st, they were already back in a Yeah, because the motions, because they wear yeah. off. That's yeah. why. And if you think you buy a big card, you think you're, I mean, we, we, you, you're you not part of the team. You know you're not, but it, it's your connection to the team, yeah. right? It's a big, it's a big transaction. A big emotional thing just happened, you know. Of course. Yeah. And it, it goes without saying that it's for whoever wins and the key players, the next week or so is going to be a bad time to buy. Yeah, you got to know that you're not going to you're likely not going to make money. <laughs> you you can do whatever you want to choose to do in this hobby, of course. Yeah. But uh, wait a few months if, if you're looking more for value in your purchases. Well, I can't wait for Thursday's show to look at all the aftermath and kind of what's happened since the game seven tonight. But finally, guys, we got to give our predictions. So we'll start with you, Phil. Who wins tonight oh. and why? Uh, go Panthers. Go McDavid. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just want. Uh, I just want everyone to have a good time. Uh, I, 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 I hope. I hope both teams have fun. Sports team is um, fun. I, I. I want McDavid to win it. I and it's going to make it so bonkers. It's going to make our hobby very interesting. But as a as a true hockey fan, uh, we. I want a, a good injection of some awesome. And coming back from a three nothing deficit is it's phenomenal. So let's make some magic tonight. Let's see it. You know. Do I think it's going to happen? No, I think Florida is going to put the lights out. Oh, yeah. wait. So I just saw like minutes before we recorded, I, I think it was on the Spit and Chicklets Instagram feed that they were reposting some uh, probably writer's Twitter or tweet or X, whatever you call it now, that Bobrovsky was not at practice today. And that oh. is a very uncommon occurrence. Whoa. No. No, Spencer, get out of your room. Stop. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, this not is good. Phil. I found a picture of Phil at a game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, it's a guy holding up a sign. I just hope both teams have fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, what Phil's I, going for. Well, I don't know if Bob. Uh, if Bob's not going to be in that site, I don't know. Well, I'm not saying he isn't, but yeah, yeah I, I think Florida is going to. Uh, man, four games in a row. But yeah, see, that's crazy. the thing. If they do it, McDavid just. Boom, he hammered that death nail right into the coffin of the debate. He is the best player if he comes back. No matter what, there's no discussion. There's no discussion anymore, right? All right, try your turn. Phil. I'm going I'm going with I'm going to go with Edmonton. I want him to win it. I want him to get the McDavid get his cup. I 
want to drive to Iowa and play some bet on the game. I don't sports gamble barely at all. Really? And I know there's a way I could do it in Minnesota, but I always like to be the legal guy and, and drive down to the borders, place my bet and run home. Boring. Boo. No, ri- <laughs> no risk, no reward. N- yeah, no, no risk, no reward. reward. But my, uh, my, my account with $30, I don't have much to, <laughs> to bet on it. So I think it'd be fun though. Just but tell, yes. uh, tell your wife to lend you some more money. I know she's, <laughs> I, she's got, she's the one with it all. Um, I just need, I just need, I just want Edmonton to win. I want Edmonton. Win. I'm saying Edmonton go, go Oilers. Okay. I'll, I'll chime in last. I'm com- a little bit conflicted like Phil here because I, I think for the hobby and I would like to see McDavid win, but we have, we've developed some really good friends in this hobby, like beard boss, Rob yes. in our discord. Who's a huge Mitch. Panthers guy, Mitch. Grotman, who, who Phil reached out. Like, Phil did a video yeah, on. Check. Did you guys see my post check. today? Yeah. Did anyone did check on him? Like, <laughs> Mitch is okay. Did anyone get back? Did Mitch reach out? Oh, poor guy, man. I was. Oh, yeah, that's the, the thing about this hobby. Sometimes you got friends on both ends, but you want. I mean, I want Edmonton to win for McDavid, but I don't want him to win because I feel bad for my friends. Like, yeah, Haas and Mitch. I don't want them to be sad. If if Ottawa ever goes to the final, Hasselhoff and I are flying to every game. Like, if That's I don't awesome. care where they're playing, yeah, yeah, no, we're a hundred percent going. And and uh, yeah, I'd be absolutely uh, devastated. Well, speaking of that, did you see Edmonton fans are saying it was cheaper for them to fly to Florida, buy tickets, go to the game. Than to actually get tickets for the oh, that's hilarious. No kidding. Because eh? it's so expensive because everyone amazing. wants to go. Well, however it ends, I just hope it's a good game and it's game seven. So cannot wait yeah. for tonight. All right. Got to make a quick mention for Gong Show partner sponsor Slab Sharks. Of course, we are very thankful to them for their support of our show. The current Slab Sharks weekly eBay auction is live. You can head to slabsharks.com straight away, as the British like to say, to check out the amazing mm-hmm. hockey cards available and place your bids couple of huge huge mcdavid rpas are in this week's yes. auction big coups for the slab sharks crew there's a 2015-16 the cup gold foil rpa out of 12 with a sick patch how many break what's three color one four? two three maybe four breaks mm-hmm. if you go to that right far right with the it's a psa authentic and auto 10 such a great card and we've complained about it before i just don't i, I don't know why upper deck put yeah. words the underneath words where the auto is that's what really... screws me up I, I that's what i it screws me up so that's his gold uh of his art Our regular RPA. rpa right yeah yeah that's weird i don't know it looks looks like a splendor card and we're mm-hmm. early and i saw like a this morning or yesterday so i'm like there's already like a sixty thousand canadian yeah. bid are you serious card. oh man that's crazy. it's at 44 us let's let's put that to canadian sixty one thousand one hundred canadian wow and then another beauty, a 2015-16 exquisite collection, rookie patch auto out of 97 BGS 9.510. This doesn't do it for me. Really? Well, it's just because I want, I don't know, man. They just, they all have a too similar look to them or something. Okay. I don't know. There's something. About oh, it. I like this better than the RPA. But again, though, they put words behind, words behind it. I, yeah. You can see the, the signature better, though. So. And it looks yeah, like a one, typewriter, right? The 13 out of 97 looks like a typewriter. Yeah, different font. Yeah. Definitely the auto's better, though. On this that one. depends on the printer they use for, for those things. Okay. Well, that being said, the three of us did spend some time, of course, this weekend. We looked through the yeah. auction. Mm-hmm. We deliberated for hours on end. And we <laughs> picked out some of our favorites. We're going to give Troy the honor, Phil, first. of, And he's going to show us his favorites from this week's Live Sharks weekly eBay auction. I hope okay. he picked better than last week. What did I pick last week? I, I don't know. know. It wasn't very good, though, but just keep going. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. This was this was my first card. <laughs> oh, much better. Much better. <laughs> well, yeah. Anything stat. So it's a 2022 Upper Deck Stature Camel Car Patch Auto Portrait Variation. Remember our variants with Stature. Yeah. Number Out of three. So out of three, again, I love Stature cards. I love the patches. They're always kind of sick on Stature. This one, the auto looks pretty good. I know sometimes the stature cards they can get a little wonky with the whatever. Well, that material. was like in 2019 and 20 when they, the the yeah. first came out, and I think they fixed the bubbling fixed issue it. after that. Mm-hmm. So this one looks really good. It's it's kind of a color match, but not really. I mean, it's red versus the purplish, but I kind of kind of like that uh, aspect of it too. But again, stature patch autos, I love. I think it's a great card. Second card, I went with the. 2020 SP Ooh. Signature Edition Legends, Jerome McGinley, all-time future watch auto. I love all-time future watches. I keep thinking I need to start 
um, PC and all these, but then I think how much money that would cost. No, you uh, should, Troy. You'd be I know. I, sh- you'd I be should. surprised. Yeah, you'd be. They've come way down, see. Troy. They've yeah. come way down. Have they? I might see, start it because I just I every time I see one of these, I just stop and I look at it. And yeah, I'm not I'm not the biggest again like guy, but great player, Hall of Hall of Fame, I think, if I remember right. Troy, what's crazy board? is what Grotman's doing. He's doing the jersey number. Yeah, that. that's not that's crazy. He's a crazy <laughs> person. That's why. <laughs> and look, 90, 99 out of ninety nine. That always looks yep. good. A, a bookend, right? Great signature. Fantastic signature. Excellent signature. With his auto. I said his name right. I I just should quit while I'm ahead because this name for forever. Can I just could never say it right? Troy, listen. C O M C is your best friend. Do not get discouraged. I I have looked into this quite recently. It is very achievable. Okay. There's only there's only uh what is it? It's only a uh, two hundred set. Right. Yeah. And two, I, 200, 200. One good thing is I got, a, I got one of the expand. I got one of the, I got the boss. Well, the bossy wasn't even that expand. I got the bossy gold. All right. Well, well, so you're 0.5% closer right. to your goal. Good job. Troy. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a second card, you're 1% of the way there. I, I think I did go on, on comp. C. the Gretzky was on there for $9,000. It still <laughs> is. And the auto, the auto isn't very good. It, it yeah. leads into his shorts. Yeah, yeah. I was just looking at it, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's one on eBay now, or I think there's one. There's one on my card post. There's one on COMC and there's one somewhere else right now. I forget where. Okay. I forget. But, but buy this again, love from Slash Shark. So they'll appreciate it. <laughs> there. No, Troy, you're buying it. You're buying yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. I might have to bid on it. I, I yeah. will. For sure, I will bid on this one. What's the price on it right now? Me. You've talked me into it. What's the price on it now? Uh, great question. Let's look. It is. What's your guess, Phil? My guess? Uh, 24 bucks. No. 117 Canadian. Oh, really? So oh, that's 85 more US. Okay. How how's he regarded by Canadians as far as like in the pecking order of esteemed uh, former players? You know what everyone remembers him for? The World Juniors. No one really remembers yeah. him in the NHL. We just remember him in the World Juniors. Like Manny Legacy was our goalie, and uh yeah. he has a lot of steam on his kid now, right? Uh no, he's you know what? I'm trying to I feel like I'm being a little negative, uh, but uh, I'm gonna keep going no one really thinks about him or his kid or <laughs> like, uh, okay. yeah, it's, he's just not really a topic. Canada's funny, man. They're, um, they're just not really thinking about hockey well, much. You well, know? think about this again, the hall of fame. I had to look him up again, just to make sure 625 goals, 1300 points. Yeah. It's Pretty great. Good career. Good, Very good phenomenal career. career. And no super cup. good guy. Super yeah. good dude. Great. Wait, no community. Yeah. No cup, yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. Like raising money. All that. He stuff. always reminds me of Cuba Gooding jr. I kind of feel like they're the same person. <laughs> Show me the money. Show me the money. Okay. All right. Here's my favorites. So, well, with my heart, I really like this card. I know Phil doesn't like Ultimate, but it's a 2020 21 Ultimate Collection. Kirill Kaprizov, Ultimate Rookies Auto out of 99. It's all right. I like him. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. That's your thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the, Phil's just Phil's just throwing shade at you and waiting for you to react. To it. I'm a contrarian. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, hey, I love that you're honest. I really do. Yeah. I appreciate your honesty. Okay. The next one I picked is a 2021-22 Upper Deck Premier Jeremy Swayman patch tacular chest logo patch out of 25 rookie year. Kaprizov's nicer. I, I I like big patch cards like this. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Horizontal Troy's favorite. Mm-hmm. Oh, it says yeah. chest logo. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I just saw that. Why right when you said that, I was like, I thought you were saying that. I was like, why is Josh being weird? He's not. It's on the card. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna. It is kind of strange, but I'm not gonna knock Upper Deck on that because we've, we and everyone else, yeah, has like been it. very, yes. negative towards the fact that that the, it gets vaguer and vaguer. So I'm all about specificity. Oh, I like. You know what? I will, uh, Troy. On the last episode, the QR code, how you were pushing that, pretty good. Yes. Um, that I think that is a fantastic idea. Upper Deck should totally do that. Put a little QR code, or yeah, and yeah. then you're like, "Yo, here's a card from, uh, you know, January 11th, 1988." Like your dad's that old? Yes, he's that old. You know, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really All right, cool. Phil. It's uh, it's time for your favorites, bud. So Troy, okay. just go ahead and throw one of them up because no, throw both of them. Up. Can you do both of them? It's the same card. Nah. Yeah, well, no, we'll do one out of ten. Okay, That's who does get. the media for the show? I'd like their email address, please. Producer Louie. <laughs> Producer Louie! Okay, shout out to Louie. That's all he wants, and he's so happy. Okay, so um, what you see on the screen here is a 2021 um, exquisite rookie autograph, the classic the classic from, 0304 design that LeBron from what James set? Introduced. 
from what do you mean? Well, it's from the cup. The bi no, right? no, no, no. It's from ice. It's for you know this. The oh box yes, I, I got so this sorry. amazing yes. card as my best card. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. It's from the ice. Okay, yes. If you look on the back though, it says the cup. It doesn't say ice. That's why I'm upset. Really? Uh, I'm pretty sure I can reach. If uh -oh, I, I think it's ice. No, I don't think. One sec, I'm checking. We're gonna race, and who are you? Check too, Troy. <laughs> here we go Josh we're both wrong I'm looking at the stoot can you hear me yeah we can. okay um I'm it looking at the back hockey yeah Troy you stole my thunder oh. I went and got the card I so we I'm gonna we're gonna <laughs> wait <laughs> so but I got did you did goal. you guys see though how somebody listed basically all of these in, oh, in the... I didn't see the four others yeah, they're all like all of them almost. So, Somebody has someone like, gave up on Byfield. He broke. He <laughs> broke their heart somewhere. <laughs> well, then because he finally had a good season, it's pretty odd now to sell these to be. You know what happened? Eh? They saw him at some pizza joint. And he gave him attitude. So like, oh, <laughs> don't meet your heroes, kids. <laughs> um, okay, yes. Let me talk about the card. The reason I picked those two cards is because I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Talk to my friends. Now, <laughs> if you notice, one card was great. One card was graded an eight, and the other yep. card was graded a nine. Yep. Yeah. Who grades Aaron. these cards? <laughs> Why are you grading these beautiful cards? It drives me crazy, man. Yep. There's an um, there's another guy, Carlos, on Facebook. He he's grading a Bobby Orr exquisite rookie autograph. Oh my god. Anyway, um, yeah. So I, <laughs> I picked the reason I picked the two cards is because one got the autograph, um, graded, and the other one did not. Yeah. Now, so what are you boys like? So to me, I don't want anyone at PSA telling me an autograph is good or not. Like, what do, what do they know that we don't? We talk so much about this stuff. We can, we are better. Your friends are better judges of character of an autograph than some kid at PSA or intern. You know? Well, I have an, I have an opinion on this. And yeah, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I got to give Jeremy Lee a little bit of credit because he's kind of tuned me into this idea. But it's very okay. true. The problem with grading an auto is that in a lot of cases, the autos are changing over time. Yeah, they fade. And it's, yeah, so, so you see like a lot in the premier auction that or the goal, the big auctions, right? That where the you'll have a card with like a nine BGS 9.510 auto that's a six figure card. And the auto yeah. is like, what? And it, but eight years ago or yeah. when the auto was graded, it probably was a 10. And then it sat in the sunlight the whole time. And so that's terrifying. I don't. I think if you if you want to maximize value selling a card, it's a good idea to grade. Grade the auto. The 10, yeah, grade the auto because if it's a 10, you're going to get more value. I think if you're buying a card that is already graded, and especially if the card is a decade old or older, you better scrutinize that auto very closely and then decide. And then you're going to be in a little bit of a tug of war, I think, with the seller as because they're going to want the 10 value. And you're going to say, listen, I don't know if... Eight years ago, this might have been a ten auto. It definitely isn't now. And and then then just in general, and I know Troy, you've pointed this out a bunch before too. I don't even understand how they grade autos. It seems yeah, so exactly. inconsistent <laughs> in the first place. But 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 here's my before we get your opinion on this too, Troy. What do you guys think sells more, higher? Uh, a regular nine, no auto grade, or an eight with a ten auto? The nine all the way. No one cares about the auto man. No one cares. What do you think, Troy? I would, I was, my first reaction was the nine would sell for more because yes. to me, the auto certification or the auto grade is kind of, is it to me, I hate it. I don't understand it. Like I've said, I can maybe to get it certified, but and then there's something where like PSA doesn't even guarantee, like there's some weird thing keep, of the verbiage. Keep going, of, Troy. Yeah, yeah, keep yeah, going. That I don't like. But also, if this is on a card from up, Upper Decks already certified it, there's the certification on the back. I'll trust. I don't think people are faking the autos on an auto card. So I'll trust that it's the auto. I don't need the auto graded. That's how I. I yeah, to totally. I 100 percent agree with you, Troy. I, I, I've just find this card in a in a PSA slab. Absolutely ridiculous. It it, it, it upsets me. It you, upsets you grade me. it to sell it, though, Phil, so that a collector yeah, like you well, buys it, then cracks it and it makes you pay more for the card. Oh, man, there's there's a real issue and it's. It's, as I'm getting older, I'm getting grumpier. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, those are our favorites. And if you're a Canadian hockey cards collector like Phil, we're American, but hey, we like slashers <laughs> too. And you're mm -hmm. looking for an easy and effective way to move some of your cards for cash, then we'd recommend checking out Slab Sharks eBay consignment services. They make your life simple 
as a seller. Uh, you just send them your cards, drop them off at one of the many shows. I think our boy Sylvan is representing Slab Sharks right now in Montreal or yeah. was this past weekend. I was supposed and to see you, him today. I did not go. <laughs> you, you, you drop off the cards and they take care of the rest. They take amazing photos, complete all your listings, answer potential buyer questions, hunt down payment from the winners, ship your cards to both Canada and here in the U.S. to guys like Troy and I. And most importantly, they handle any post-sale issues. So for complete consignment information, Check out Slapsharks' brand new website at Slapsharks.com and then download their app while you're at it. Happy news! Happy news! Troy? Happy news. Oh, Jesus. We got It's like a barbershop quartet. <laughs> Try for Happy, news. Happy, news. <laughs> Happy news! Happy news! Happy news! Okay, we always start with the road to infinity. We're going to do a, a little bit of a beefier update, but I found some kind of, I think, interesting info. And of course, the Road to Infinity is where we're tracking the fairly consistent rise of the Connor Bedard base Young Guns PSA 10 pop count. In just a matter of three and a half months, as we've talked about on Thursday, the Bedard Young Guns already has the third highest PSA 10 pop count of any hockey card. At the last pop count, or last time we updated, the pop count had risen to 3,744 <laughs> with a 45.6% gem rate. Uh, are we ready to see the update, guys? Uh, Phil, are you scared? Uh, I'm terrified. It? Let's go. Let's get her done like a Band-Aid. Rip it off. Yeah, yeah you're hiding in the corner here right now. Okay, so the most recent PSA 10 population reports, the Connor Bedard Base Young Guns PSA 10 now sits at a pop count of, drum roll for Troy. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm so glad we invested in a button bar. It's my favorite drum roll. My favorite drum roll. 81, which is an increase of 137 PSA 10 since Thursday's show. Now, the updated gem rate is 45.8%, so ticking up a bit from our last update as well. Well, let's dig into the data a little bit like we do like to do here on this program. So here's an interesting tidbit, guys. Well, as far as PSA 10 pop counts go, we know that the Bedard Young Guns PSA 10 is still in a distant third place behind Jack Hughes and our guy Kirill the Thrill. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go and, and give you the updated top three. 2019 Hughes Young Guns PSA 10, 5,262 copies. 2020 Caprisoft PSA 10, 5,235. Then we have Bedard, 3,881. So right now Bedard is 1,381 PSA 10s behind Brother Jack for the top spot. But it's not due to lack of grading enthusiasm. <laughs> so let's go back at these top three cards, and this time we're going to rank them in order of most copies graded. So remember, the rank in order of PSA 10s is Hughes, Kaprizov, Bedard. When we look at most copies graded, the third highest, so we're going to go from three to one, is Hughes with 7,048 copies of his Young Guns graded. Kaprizov is number two with 7,892 copies graded, and that makes Bedard already, between the three, number one with 8,470 wow. copies of his Young Guns graded already. And besides the PSA 10s, the rest are nines almost. Yeah. I looked that up the other day. That was weird. That's crazy. Do you think it'll hit 20K in five years? Well, we'll see. So in, ah. in a... <laughs> in 109 days since the series to release, so far PSA has graded on average 78 copies of the Bedard Young Guns per day. Hmm. What this does, I think, guys, is it illustrates the importance of gem rate on population count. If the Bedard base Young Guns had the, the same gem rate as Jack Hughes, there would already be 6,324 yep. Connor Bedard PSA 10s. Wow. So are you saying someone at the printer is sitting there when Bedard cards come and like poking the yes. corner? <laughs> no, they are. I'm telling you, they bring it up in their team meetings. It's just like the cops with tickets. I'm telling you, we don't have a quota to fill. It's just a coincidence. Yeah, okay, go on. There's quotas. I'm telling you. They're shredding the evidence after that's ah, ridiculous. Now, it is important to note that although there have been 8,470 Bedard Young Guns PSA 10 or cards graded, and it's more than Dollar Bill Kirill. It's more yep. than Jay Hughes. It's not quite yet the most graded hockey card by PSA. That distinction still falls on the 1990 Yarmir Yager OPG Premier, where to date, guys, 
12,320 copies have been graded, but because it has a 30% gem rate, there's less PSA 10s than all three of them, Hughes, Kaprizov, and Bedard. Fascinating. 8,500 Young Guns have already been graded by just PSA. It's... Who's buying the cards, man? Who's buying them? Like, well, I've, I've made the prediction. No one PCs Bedard. So, so yeah, I, I, I agree know. with you. Yeah. <laughs> dealers to okay. dealers to dealers. Yeah. yeah. We're going to move on to our next story. And no, this one makes sense, but I'm going to admit, I, I kind of missed it. But I, I was yeah. looking at an article on about, <laughs> about the, the PSA and Golden divorce that it was a better headline than article and, and not due yeah. to them, but they're really, I, I supposedly is a pretty amicable split. They just figured that the, the golden business model and then PSA collectors that their models were not, uh, were just kind of going in different directions. What happened? Right? What happened? Uh, oh, you don't know that. No, Nat Turner and collect, uh, they sold golden to eBay. What? I never, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then in turn, so they both kind of partnered at eBay in a weird way where, okay. well, now eBay owns Golden Auctions, and then also PSA took over the eBay vault, which I still don't really get vaulting services, yeah. I'm going to be honest. I know they're popular, but, but as part of this, though, too, and this is the part that was new to me the other day, PSA has now also taken over the eBay Authenticity Guarantee Program from CGC. So remember, if you spent $250 or more on a card that qualifies, I guess is where they use, for the eBay Authenticity Guarantee Program, the seller would send it to CGC or some office where CGC would evaluate its authenticity, and then it would go on to the buyer after that. Apparently, now that CGC is out. So yeah, PSA, CGC's out. I'm pretty sure PSA was still involved before, though, right? I think they split it between them, right? It's all terrible. It's all. It's I, don't, all I, I don't know. I, that, I think that, that that's CGC's a, this is an indictment like, on the program right now because it yeah. tells you that no one knows what's going on. No, it's <laughs> brutal. It's it. I I there I, at the bare minimum. The bare minimum. When I buy a card, I should have a little check mark, a box to say "opt out," and I take all responsibility if the card is fake. I I don't want any. I don't want any turds at PSA <laughs> or CGC or CGC or whatever's going on touching my card because every time. I, I have a damaged patch card. I made a whole yeah. vent video yeah. uh, six, seven months ago. I'm, I'm, I'm not impressed with their performance. I, I was telling Trey the other day that I feel like that your testimonial or experience that I've seen a lot more examples of people having your experience than not. Where in theory, this should be like a very good thing, right? Yes, it's like if done properly. Because yeah, so is communism, a, but <laughs> uh, who wants to buy a fake card? Right? Yeah. Nobody wants to do that. And so to have an intermediary, so th they should have it, the, which should be a the, good thing. the option. They should have the option to, to opt into the authenticity guarantee program or not, because you, me, Troy, maybe not Louis. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we know more about our cards than the guy or girl who was hired recently that can be trained. Sure. Have you ever seen an eBay commercial? You tell me one of those people in those eBay commercials knows more about <laughs> anything they're trying to sell us that we don't know about. Give me a break. Well, they have a, I've seen where at, at, like sneaker shows, doesn't eBay do sneaker authentications? They'll have the experts there doing that. Yeah. Stuff. I, have you ever met a sneaker head who doesn't know everything? Yeah. yeah, pretty, yeah I would, a lot. Exactly. I would trust. And no sneaker heads working for eBay. So, Probably not, right? Like, And I was just looking up the eBay. They still, it looks like they have the old site up for the authentication. And it says they partner, obviously, with CGC. That says we also partner with PSA. So I don't I know. I think how they're they... still doing comic books through CGC. Is that, like... see, that, that, yeah, oh, there's something. That's probably what it is, Josh. Yeah, that's probably because they're the big yeah. comic one, right? Like that's that's yeah. their. Uh, but again, niche, this comes back niche. to the no one knows what the HE double hockey sticks is going on. <laughs> Look, they have a global shipping program that has that that in a time of climate change destroying the world has to go to nine airports <laughs> before we get a card. Okay, or eight, so you eighteen distri distribution centers. Yeah, this <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. And and then they yeah. they're telling us they're an eco friendly company. <laughs> like, uh, you, uh, what's happening? What is happening? It's yes. forty nine dollars to mail this ten dollar card because it has yeah. to go to exactly. It has and we'll to guarantee it for you. miles to get to yeah. your. Yeah. It's unbelievable, dude. It's such a. It's it's. Uh, anyways, the whole world's in a type of reset, and unfortunately, our card hobby is in the middle of it too. I think. Yeah. Well, one positive I saw in sort of the change to PSA 
is that what PSA yeah. is going to do now is if they find a card that where they, they feel like the slab is altered or or faked or, or something, some shenanigans have gone on where they will, through the authenticity guarantee program, be able to automatically decertify that certificate oh, the, number the, or whatever. That and, and card cleric cleaning, they did that with that card. Yeah, well, did you see, too, that they updated their alterations, no-nos, to include cards that have had a, a wax or chemical sprayed to them that they're going to oh, consider they, ungradable? They have, going they have a detector? They have a machine to detect the chemicals on the cards? So I don't potentially know. Clean. Probably exactly, human. man. <laughs> Who cares? It's just making the game more complicated. That's all. Keep playing the game, everybody. Keep playing it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anything to add to this before we move on? Yeah, I don't. I don't know how. I, I would love to know how big this was, like a chunk of CGC's business. I I don't know if it was if this is meaningful, but they're 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 the big like poke trading card or uh, TGC yeah. right TCG yeah TCG. God, these acronyms. This hobby is well, it has to be. I mean, there's a lot of two hundred fifty dollar cards sold on eBay, right? Yeah, so that I don't always somewhere. get mine authentic. Like I I I would say thirty percent of my cards don't come back off with the authenticity guarantee. Like they miss it. Like I'll buy a card for like four eighty off eBay. It'll just come to my house from the seller. Interesting. Like, yeah. That's... So can you opt out? Is there an opt out? No, no there, there isn't. isn't. No, oh, okay. I'm, I'm it's just I've at least gotten maybe ten to fifteen cards over two fifty, hmm. and nothing. But okay. I, I'm happy. I don't care. I, yeah. There's yeah, too much control, man. Like more accountability to the person. Uh, it's not the world we live in. All right. Or I've had topic. like two cards ever go through the program. <laughs> Oh really? Well, yeah. Most of my bigger cards I don't get on eBay. I either get on my yeah. card post or so, slab sharks. Comfies. I actually get more bigger yes. cards on. Well, that's not that's just a lie because that's eBay. Well, auctions, auctions can get up. Oh, I missed that Gretzky last Do week. Do slab sharks so. cards go through eBay authenticity? They must. Great question. We should be able to look really. I don't quick. know. I'm not if really we sure. Go to like a big. They would have to. Mark. Let's, oh, uh, go to like go to the McDavid. See, yeah. I trust Karn. Way more than I trust some yeah, somebody at PSA or whatever. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I don't see. I don't there, see it either. It says, oh, because it's already graded. Oh, but they, no, they're going to do graded they, cards, right? They'll still go through graded. And what, what they don't evaluate is the card. When when a graded card goes through eBay authenticity, they're not looking at the card. They're looking at the slab to make sure that the slab has not been altered or tampered in okay, any like sort of one. way. Like my Macar. Yeah, I don't, yeah, oh, there it is. It's on the top. Oh, this is a guarantee. But the but the McDavid it didn't have McDavid that. McDavid didn't have that. Interesting. Yeah, you're right. It didn't. There's huh. nobody in charge, boys. Nobody's in charge. <laughs> oh, no, nobody no. knows what's going on. <laughs> okay. uh, one more quick hobby news story before we move on. I just thought this was interesting. So we have some Stanley Cup TV ratings, and particularly we like to look at these here in the U.S. So on ESPN and Nielsen are reporting 4.2 million total viewers tuned in in the United States for game six of the Stanley cup finals on Friday night. That is a 54% increase over game five of the Stanley oh. cup finals last year, which ended up being the clinching game between Florida and Vegas. So uh, that's good news here in the U S to it makes sense, right? There's a, some yeah. excitement and drama and, and by game six, Edmonton was making the series a little bit interesting and then I, I just found some, this is like a dump of other, uh, some NHL TV ratings nuggets that I've recently found. So in the U.S. specifically, the recent third round, so the, this year, delivered an average audience of 2 million viewers, up 26% year over year. The playoffs are currently the most watched since 2008 across all of North America. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. That's cool. The league announced in April that more than 58.6 million viewers tuned into games across North America during the regular season, hmm. which was the most watch on cable in 30 years in the U S and the most watch generally since the 19 or since the 2015, 16 campaign. And then finally the growth in viewership has not affected ticket sales either as the league set a single season attendance record with And then and this was by the time there's still 18 games of the regular season remaining. More than 22.5 million fans had attended games with stadiums filled. Listen to this, guys, at 97% capacity throughout the season. Ooh, call the fire department. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so it, it appears by the numbers that the sport is in a pretty healthy place. And at least here in the U.S., um, 
I assume on Canada, Phil, like tonight the TV ratings will be 100 percent or am I just... <laughs> everyone? Uh, I don't know. I've borrowed. Um, I've been borrowing watching hockey for the last two decades uh, off the Internet. So mm. <laughs> maybe am I not supposed to say that. I have no idea. <laughs> you know, what? Um, I saw an article that was behind a paywall, so I couldn't read it. And I don't know if this is true or one or just one perspective. But the headline was alluding to that over the last number of years that TV ratings for NHL in Canada have been down. And then really isn't doesn't have the same impact as it well was. i'll tell you this no one's watching sports up here like so hasselhoff my son goes to the exact same high school i did hockey was life for in every grade girls boys just hockey was a top yep. three priority teachers like they'd wheel the tv in we'd watch the world juniors in <laughs> elementary school in high school it was amazing wow now um my son is an absolute diehard nhl fanatic and he does not have one friend, not one, in mm. his grade or school that that is up to par with him. Or even remote. Like, hey, Cole, did you watch the game? He doesn't have anyone to say that in school. No. Yeah. Nothing. No, but nobody, like, it's he doesn't play hockey. I'm, I, I think if you're in the community and the kids are playing hockey, that hasn't changed much. Because you, that's your environment. So, you know, you only know what's so close to you. But um, there, there's no, there's no comfy, cozy hockey winter canadian maple syrup vibe up here anymore not much unfortunately do you think that the, the country at large now will sort of adopt the oilers for tonight and just so canada wins the stanley cup i think it's city specific so i think i think if i think if ottawa was in the finals this city would wake up i think edmonton has woken up and they know how to party over there obviously from the 80s um <laughs> you know so it's so a lot of dads are having a great time with their sons right now i'd give anything right like i know we didn't win a cup but we made it to the yeah. finals 15 years ago. Like those, those are memories. I had seasons tickets for like six, six years. Yeah. Loud used to be very good back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it, I think there's a lot of emotions going on in Edmonton right now because it's generational wins. It's potential, you know, a lot of um, a lot of families probably coming together for this. But in general, in Ottawa, no, this there, there, there's no hockey vibe here. I live right in the, ca the capital of the country and I don't there's not a buzz. It was like, oh, are you watching the game? Or yeah, no, no, no one's talking like that anywhere. And and I meet new people every day with my job. Every day I meet them, and no one's talking about it, unfortunately. If you get deep into like TV and like the industry and measurement, there's a lot of controversy right now around ratings, and that like Nielsen is using like well, what's called like auto home ratings to where they're kind of using multipliers to factor in people at restaurants and bars and stuff oh, cool. like that to to count more people but i don't know troy when you look at numbers like this and just kind of think of anecdotally do you feel that the, the game is growing here in our country oh i feel it's growing i think i would love to see actually i think the college game is actually growing more <laughs> than the yeah. nhl game which is actually good because that should funnel more people to the nhl yeah you guys are um, exploding like we're so i'll tell you this we're talking i i believe the the amount of people playing hockey is is i don't have any numbers to back this up i feel like it's dropping in in where i live in canada in mm. ottawa i will say I, a lot of people when i do talk hockey we're all talking ncaa like the, yes. your american program how canada has dropped the ball how our OHL, like our, our Canadian yeah, hockey like, leagues, have been such a producer for many years. Yep. Now we've taken back seat to your to your NCAA. Program. Yeah, NCAA is becoming the new thing. Like that's yeah, what absolutely, to, Troy. Yeah, and, and good for you guys, man. The pursuit well, of your your best players are starting to come to yeah. as Lins they should. Barini, they, right? if you want to be the best at something, that's a good thing. That discipline is a good thing, and I guess the NCAA program is not faltering on that. They're still pursuing that goal. There's a lot of goals in Ottawa that are um, confused and yeah. the pursuit of excellence is not among us. And I think, unfortunately, time will fix that, but we've taken a big back seat. And hockey's think, expensive, you know, as well. Yes, that's what I want to get to. Hockey Hockey's is still pricey. expensive and it's getting, yeah. it's not getting cheaper. It's still the probably the most expensive, well, some obscure polo or something probably cost me <laughs> polo what but, the heck <laughs> you gotta get your horse right you gotta get your horse Frickin'. and run around on your field oh well, okay we'll do water polo no horse needed there you go <laughs> yeah that was, i know I, th I thought i had some other revolution or some statement but i can't remember it never mind you got it oh. Troy. come on it's in there so <laughs> wasn't that good we can move on you can we can come back <laughs> and take it later all right so we're gonna move on to uh, our next topic here so in last week's mailbag we got a really great question that we turned into a little video clip that if the question was, you know, if we think the hobby is a welcoming place for newcomers. Oh, Phil, you shared 
<laughs> Take that slanderous material off the screen. <laughs> I went a little wild with the uh, AI image creators this week, and Phil, you were my muse. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Who am I hugging? Who is that? Is that the is that Joe Maple Leaf fan? Uh, but whoever he's got like a crazy arm because his logo goes over the sleeve. The oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. logo, his front logo, like morphed in front of his arm. Uh AI yeah, image creators <laughs> are the best. Honestly, I could spend my whole life doing those. I look so, like so one you... of those. I look like a wish kid that grew up, man. What have you done to me? <laughs> oh, we're not done yet, Phil. There's oh, more. Great. There's more of you coming. So uh, you shared your perspective that you, that you think that the hobby is not an inherently welcoming place. Troy had a little bit of a different perspective. I was not on the show that day. We clipped your guys' answers, shared on social media, got tons of feedback to it. I don't want to rehash the question, but I would like to maybe continue the discussion and build off of it. And instead, each of us share some of our thoughts and discuss how, how, what we can do to actually then make the hobby a more welcoming new place. Like, let's be part of the solution, maybe not part of the problem. Uh, I, I think we all share the belief that the hobby is amazing and we want to see it grow. And, you know, and then as part of this, uh, we're going to introduce a new segment to uh, for Phil, who uses Facebook groups way more than we do. He wants to share some thoughts on some specific Facebook etiquette. But uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll kick it off. So uh, what I was thinking, guys, as far as like, how do we make the, the hobby more welcoming or to people or make it easier for people to have some success. One of the things that I come back to is, well, a theme in the all of sports cards over the last couple of years, especially with fanatics coming in has been sort of the, 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 the hobbies growing up, it's becoming more of like a real business. It's not just like people in church basements anymore. You have mm -hmm. big corporations coming in and it's created a, a true industry. And most industries have associations that the key companies contribute to yeah, like trade and, associations yeah like trade associations yeah. where part of these are to help promote the general industry itself right to promote like the hobby as itself and then to also come up with like etiquette rules and standardization and then maybe provide resources for people wanting to get into it so for instance if you're a company that makes airplanes and you're worried about a shortage of aeronautical engineers in the future that they would sort of spearhead programs to introduce the jobs and give scholarships, all that sort of thing. So I almost wonder if at some point our hobby would benefit from having an organization that could also serve as a watchdog too, right? And instead of having like snarky type commenters that do that do shows, like truly help keep <laughs> big companies in line. Hold on. Hold on. And Shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> <laughs> and then also standardized things that that would make it easier for people. Like, what is a rookie card? A true rookie? You mean like a like an over like a a group to oversight things? Yeah, yeah. The, the, that that everyone you you know in the industry buys into as sort of the like so the like Motion Picture Association of America, yeah. right? That sets the, the I don't the, know what that is. The, they they do the ratings for movies, whether they're rated R. Oh, or I get US, what you're saying. 18, okay, okay. Thirteen, right? It's just some sort of in the fanatics and PWC, or well, they're the same company, but eBay. Well, it has to be a non profit, companies. right? Because yeah, I would, as, as soon, soon as there's profit, yeah. this nefarious activity can happen. It would be, it would be a non profit, but I don't know. Do you guys like that idea? Is there anything? I do. Know? I didn't know anything like that existed. It's called a trade group. Yeah, trade association well, like, or yeah, yeah it sounds fancy. I like like it. in the in the video game. Or, uh, this is the Consumer Electronics Association for like electronics, video okay, games. Okay, okay, I know what there used to be a big are. association that put on E3, and but that's gone away. But would there be like a board of governors? Yeah, you oh, have yeah. a board. But Can I have, be on the board? Here's the thing: there's so many. Like, you're, I think part of the problem with the industry is I don't know. Like, it seems like everyone hates each other. So I don't know how you get. Yeah these companies to agree to be on a board or be in this association. Well, they, a they, representative. yeah, that's, that's it. They're, they're a profit company, right? They, well, they, they, Microsoft, Amazon, they all are on tech. They have these tech associations and Microsoft's on them. Amazon, Google, Apple. Let's they do this. To, this. I didn't even they, know this existed. Let's make this happen. <laughs> well, you, a revolution. You, you, it doesn't work until you get the big companies yeah. on board and they contribute not only the money but they say that we'll abide by this is another great example like i come from the advertising world so mm -hmm. there's the american advertising association that standardizes like all like the digital ad size units right so here's like okay. 
a 300 by 250 ad and here's how they're measured right so that you have consistent measurement oh okay so like a started. 16 by 9 ratio 1080p yeah standard. yeah yeah th th that's or how you count a click or so that y the industry it helps the industry perform better right and yes it helps, of course it helps create common understanding and definitions it gives around, you a structure it gives you a structure yeah, to be creative in as well yeah that's a great way to put it so so that was my first idea Th then my second one was is that maybe like should larger events in companies like the the guys that do like the spark card expo in toronto which are great guys and, and maybe people like us have to help with this too I, are you know should we should there be like seminars or breakout sessions that are geared towards new collectors yes i i, I have literal guilt for that because i we could do more we can absolutely do more yeah their, their first line of entries jeff wilson ah Ah, right like that's not and i i mean hey that guy's got his own thing that's fine i'm yeah. not hating on him but i mean that that cannot be your first entry that cannot be your first entry or or some some jerk dealer at the expo you're all excited remember i told my hasselhoff story it took cole like three days yeah. to get over his bad first table right he was all yeah, excited and it's, it's like basic stuff it's not who to buy or picks it's, yeah just basic just... basic josh that's a great idea because a lot of people romanticize our hobby in the comfort of their own home once yes. they leave the comfort of their own home, if they get a bad experience, boom, they're gone. Their heart's broken, bro. Their heart's and you broken. Have, I'll say this too. If you if you go that route, I love the idea. You have to advertise the bejesus out of it. Because guess what? I, I'm guessing there's not a lot of new collectors that go to the Toronto Sports Card Expo right away. Correct. I think you'd have to advertise to get those people in. Yes. Yeah, but, yes. but, but you have to like, okay, I'm not going to disagree with you because this is impossible to know. <laughs> but if I were to push back a little bit on that, Troy, it would. We're we fall on like the diehard spec side of the spectrum yeah. of collectors. How many casual like if you look at the 30,000 people that go to the expo, I would say there's a, a decent percentage, at least that are very casual that would benefit from knowing or or just hmm. building confidence around some of the basics like how to make sure that if you buy an auto that it's not a fake auto or how, how to evaluate the, how the the hobby evaluates condition of cards, you know, just mm. stuff that we all fundamentals, need to, fundamentals. Fun pillars, pi uh, hobby pillars of knowledge. But I don't know. You guys may feel, do, do you, agree, are you more, do you think Troy's more right that anyone that goes to the expo probably already knows this stuff? I, the... I don't know what I kind of forgot. What, uh, what I didn't really feel a difference in what we were talking about. What were you, what did you mean, Troy? Like we, we they should be I'm like, saying the... like people that come to the expo probably are not beginners or, yeah, so I agree with Troy. Most people, I, I don't think a lot of people going there would just go there on a whim. They would plan to go there. Well, what if you're local, there. though? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe. I, I mean, yeah, we don't even think so without a difference. We should have a breakout session and see what happens. <laughs> see if people show yeah. up. Yeah, I, mean, I really like your trade association idea. I think I think a, yeah. a, a something that is not looking for money. As soon as money is starting to be in yeah. there, and then the human nature kicks in and it's horrible, mm -hmm. right? I also think, like, again, not to put the onus on, like, the Smart Card Expo, there's guys like us, right? And, and with a platform like ours, we can do more to try yeah. to be welcoming and produce more newcomer, like, more beginner-level content. And we should. I, I feel new. kind of like a jerk that we're not. I feel like well, we should. We used to do one-on-one episodes quite a bit, and yeah. the the schedule of our show has made those harder, but maybe that's something that we need to get back to. it. We have some ideas around that as well. So 80%, uh, not 80, maybe I'd say 50 to 60% of my communication on Instagram or email um, or people are like, oh, hey, it's Loud Collector. It's people asking me questions that are new in the hobby. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, that's that's pretty crazy, man. Half the questions come from that. It's people asking, oh, should I do this or should I do that? And I, I don't know what to say half the time. So I'd like a group where I'd be like, oh, let me ask my buddy here. He knows better. Poor Sylvain. I, you know, text them all the time. Like, what should this guy do? And, you know, that's not, that's not fair. I'm not a seller, man. If you want to lose money, go ahead. Ask me. <laughs> well, and, and I think, you know, if you analyze the, the small amount of success our show has had, I think a huge reason for that, Phil, and why it's people have gravitated is that what Troy and I, we're not experts. We've never, we're not experts. We've never yeah. been experts and we never tried to be experts. And so, yeah, you know, I think well. in a small way, <laughs> like, like we, you know, it's not threatening, right? To come yeah. into where you feel like that you have to know all these like crazy details that you have to be in the hobby 30 years to to really understand. 
Uh, and then the, the last kind of point I had is a little soapboxy, so I'll try to be quick. But I just think as individuals, we need to think about what type of ambassadors for the hobby we want to be in to understand that every interaction we have will have an impact on somebody, either positively or negatively. And at the end of the day, all of us either contribute more energy to make the hobby better or we take energy away, positive energy away from the hobby. And so if you come across somebody that's new, um, reach out to them. Let them know that you can answer any questions and just in general, try to be welcoming, you know, look within, I guess. But um, again, that's a little soapboxy. So I didn't think it was soapboxy. That was very well said, Josh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, what, what, what do you guys think? Before we go on to your uh, little your little segment, Phil, do Troy or Phil, do you guys have any other ideas that can, I, uh, you know, can make the hobby a little bit more welcoming? I was thinking about something. Maybe this isn't more welcoming. Maybe this is more personal onus, but a lot of times, like when we started out, when you go and look at all these groups that there's all these different platforms, you can go on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And I know a lot of complaints were like, oh, this group is toxic. My advice would be then to leave that. Don't leave that group. Don't get caught that you're going to have this FOMO. You're going to miss out, like maybe on some selling group, but everyone in there is just nasty and rips on all the pricing and everything. Just leave the group. I... I believe people should take a little bit of onus on, on removing themselves when that stuff happens. Just don't get involved in that crap because it's just you're going to waste more time and energy on that than, than actually enjoying the hobby and, and go out there and find those spots or those find places your tribe. online. Find your people. Find yeah, your find people. your yeah, exactly. Find right? your people. Jerks find jerks. Trust me. Don't, <laughs> don't let the jerk. If the jerk finds you, just leave. Find your good people. Yeah. Find your that's tribe. something I had to learn. Like I, it's not like I was like, oh, look at me, look at me, being all high and fluty here. No. I was in some groups and I was just like, oh my God, like I'm just getting beaten down. I think I'm going to like move on eventually. But mm -hmm. mm. Anything, any ideas, specific ideas you have, Phil? That we haven't really uh, talked about? No, no, I just, it, the hobby, the hobby is real life, right? There's a hobby within a hobby. Uh, the, most of the things we're talking about here are just life lessons. You know, there's, sure. there's just, there's such bad people in every category of things that we do, we like, we work at. It's just common sense stuff, but you know, common sense ain't so common sometimes. <laughs> you know, I am I I I will fake it even if I'm in a in a bad mood and I'm not having a good day and someone sees me like, "Oh my god, I saw my son loves your video." And I have a head pounding. Fake it, man. Just fake it. Get through it. If that's one yeah. of their first card shows or one of their their first experiences, it, it, it is, I, I agree with you, Josh, it is up to us to go above and beyond and show them a nice soft entrance, you know, or not be a jerk, you know, tell them yeah. I'm, I got a headache. Get out of here. I don't want to. So you know, <laughs> it, 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 the hobby, oh, it's so cheesy. I'm going to say it. You get what you put out, right? Or you, but you then get don't complain when nobody wants to buy your, your card that's been sitting on eBay. Well, right? I, I'm being very, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm being very polite and uh, I I'm, yeah, exactly. I, I have a I have a lot of strong opinions on the on the selling side of things, but um, I'm I'm a big collector. I think you were big collectors. Our big group. I mean, who's the who's the biggest seller in our uh, group? So they right? No. Yeah. So we're majority. We collect cards. That's why we all get along. We're all trying to help each other. I think if like three people were selling massive cards, and then two of you guys were trying to build sets, and then four of us were just doing person PCs, probably wouldn't jive that well. You know, we're all pretty similar in what we do. So find your okay. group, find your, find your tribe and uh, they won't steer you wrong. Okay. I'm, I'm very excited now. We've been talking about this for a little bit. We're ready for the, the debut segment, whatever you want to call it of we're calling it what creases fills cardboard. <laughs> where... <laughs> a little curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Eyebrows are on point. <laughs> now, if you're watching on YouTube, it's, it's fantastic. You, you want, yeah. I don't know if this is going to hurt your feelings or not, and I don't mean no, it this way, can't hurt my but, feelings. but I, I think it's kind of funny. So I didn't use Bing Image Creator for this. I used ChatGPT, their Dolly Image Creator. Oh, okay. Where you can actually, I actually uploaded a picture. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Josh. <laughs> that is. Pulled it, and pulled it and paste the cartoon off. Is of that it. why the eyebrows are perfect? <laughs> <laughs> What you see is a middle-aged Greek man. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'm excited for this for a couple reasons. And this is, again, what creases Phil's cardboard. And it's because you're going to talk about Facebook etiquette. And Troy and I are not huge 
like Facebook hobby people. And so yeah, I didn't know that. that's crazy. Um, I, I'm excited to get your perspective and learn more. So with that being said, we're turning the mic over to you, Phil. Go for it. Okay. Well, I, um, I guess my comments last week uh, definitely sparked a lot of people's uh, agreement because I said, I don't feel the hobby is very welcoming. And my brain went right away to uh, social media, more specifically Facebook posts and Facebook groups. They're very, um, they're not governed. They are. And if, if, if they are, they're governed too much, right? The mods quick, the mods are sure. sleeping, post pictures, you know? Um, so yeah, you, you get some bad ones. So the problem is, is I was going to do a, a loud, a loud collector video, but every time I save these posts, um, they get deleted after because the people that are posting these things know what they're posting. So there's some, okay. So where do we start? I made some notes. Well, well, okay. Give me an example. So, I, cause again, I don't, I don't know this world. So when you said somebody posts something that you would want to do a video, like in general, what, okay, this makes me sad. It, this makes, this is, this, this makes me sad. This doesn't give me faith in humanity. There's a new guy in the hobby, never fails. So there's there's four or five Facebook groups that are the biggest. They have about you know five to fifteen thousand members, and they're they're buying and selling groups, but they're also sure. for show and tell. So they write NFS NFT, not for sale, not for trade. Gotcha. So as soon as you see those acronyms, the guy just wants to he just wants to chat. And yeah, I'm speaking a little bit from the heart because sometimes when I used to post things, people would try to buy it from me. People are telling me I'm stupid for what I paid for it. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So you'll see a post on Facebook that says NFS NFT. And some guy says, uh, hey, I just finished my collection of uh, four color ice cards of, let's say, Alexander Barkov. Obviously, that never happened. A bigger, this never fails. A bigger Barkov collector comes, a bigger fish. They post a picture in their comments of their big Barkov collection. And then they say, I wish you the best in your search. What is the matter with you, man? What is, and there's one guy specifically in Vancouver, you know, who I'm talking about, not you guys, but he knows if he's listening, which he probably is. Let the person have their moment. It doesn't matter. We're all a bunch of kids. Let the 65 year old man that has his PSA six Mark Bossy card, let him show it off. Don't Mark, show your Mark, Mark Bossy, Mike Bossy. I'm sorry. <laughs> show your Mike Bossy. Don't show your Mike Bossy eight and tell him you got a better deal. The, the, and, and listen, this happens constantly. I'm not just I'm not just bringing this. It's up the one upping. upping. The one. It's upping. the one upping, man. Do yeah. better. Do like do better. Like punch up. Why are you punching down? You're always going to punch down. You're always going to have a less good looking wife. You're always going to have less money in your bank account. You're just a bit yeah. of a jerk. Stop it. There's no reason. Mm -hmm. Let let especially now let people be happy. Okay, so that's one kind of post. People just showing their collection. Show and tell. We all did show and tell in grade four. Let them have their moment. Okay. No, it's not about you. It's about them. Um, another one. Okay. So, uh, sellers out there, if you're listening, if you're posting a card on Facebook, it is not your virtuous moment. Okay. So I give you this pride. So I don't, you, you guys know, I sent that Shastirkin for 39,000. Did yeah. you see that Shastirkin for 30? So one oh one premier card. So one oh one Igor Shastirkin, uh, premier card, uh, popped up. I won't read it. I well, you know what? Maybe I should. I have I have it queued up here. One second. Actually, no, I can't find it. So we won't do that. It was a sales pitch. It was a used car salesman. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity to achieve a card that will never be found again in the wild. This is an asset. This will increase in value. Blah 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 blah. Bro, our buddy, stop, 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 stop. Thirty. No one's paying you thirty nine thousand. But someone who's loaded, someone who has a really good job and is kind of just getting in the hobby, might think twenty eight thousand is a good deal to get on that card where every one of us should step in there. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, this guy was made fun of for his pricing. Um, and then the moderators uh, took it down on this particular Facebook page. Outrageous asks deserve to be um, to have outrageous things thrown at it. I'm a firm believer in that. So if you if you want to post a PSA for Wayne Gretzky OPG um, and you want to put it for thirty thousand dollars, I won't. But I want to make fun of you. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I don't know if that's ethically sound. The guy's shooting his shot, but I, I, if you're asking my opinion, you're allowed to make fun of that price. Okay. I, can I, I jump in there? Because yeah, if, absolutely. I'll go forever. So you should. It, yeah. It, if somebody is knowingly like they know it's a, I don't know what a PSA four is worth, yes, but, exactly. but if it's a $2,000 card and they're listening for 30, yeah, they're, then sure. Make fun of them. But, but again, going back to maybe it's somebody that's new that oh, I get what you're saying. that that got this card because their grandpa died 
and oh, they they, they saw that a Wayne Gretzky had sold for thirty thousand, and they don't know the difference between a PSA four and a PSA nine or eight. Okay, uh, eight that's would fair. Be closer, then maybe then maybe that's an education moment. So you know maybe the the better way is to say, uh, you know. He, send them to like 130 point or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, here's a way to look up the real value of this card. You're not, I, I well, you hope they're reasonable because to... no one likes criticism, right? So you hope they're reasonable. I would send a meme that says, are you serious? And see how they react. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that's a good point, Josh. I didn't even think about it. I, I had this just I, I, in my head, you know, this just yeah. in my head. But honestly, to your point though, and it sounds like in this case, it might've already happened. That's probably where, a having a group that has good moderators comes in where yeah. to avoid just a s show yeah. right where they would take a post like that down and say hey listen buddy you can't you can post cards for sale here but they can't be for like a thousand times comps yeah Th that doesn't point. benefit anybody yeah all right well what else what else creases your uh mark? gretzky so there's a there's a uh i'm sure we're all part of it there's a gretzky rookie fan page out there we're buying and selling just the gretzky just the 79er right tops are yep. peachy um, I think I think that a lot of the mods are letting some other Gretzky cards go in there. It drives me. Okay, so I think I joined that page like four years. Uh, I don't know, a few years ago. I have seen this never fails. Have humility, folks. Okay, you're learning about Gretzky's. You ask questions about Gretzky's. The community in that Facebook group is great. Six months later, someone asks a similar question that you asked six months earlier. And you respond with such attitude, such, yeah, yeah. Such that's visceral, ridiculous. Like, yes. it dry, so I always, I hate bullies. I love bullying a good bully. It's one of my favorite things to do in life. <laughs> I cannot stand bullies. I will privately message you. I will screenshot your questions from before and send them to you and try to teach. See, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm going to die too young, you know, trying to teach a lesson there. The absoluteness of someone who just barely knows what they're talking about drives me insane on Facebook groups. So if you're listening and you're part of and it, it, the only reason I'm picking the Wayne Gretzky group is because that's where it happens by far the most. Uh, there should be a yellow dot on his shoulder. <laughs> this guy doesn't even know. Two weeks ago, you didn't know, Chad. You know, like, so I, I don't understand what the problem is. We should be helping each other. See, it's all cliche, man. Cliche doesn't sell. Punch up. Don't punch down. But there's something about like the 55 year old man who knows a little bit about the Wayne Gretzky. They have to, they just have to be so absolute about their knowledge. They have to type it out. I I, I highly recommend for entertainment only join the Wayne Gretzky rookie card group on Facebook. Okay, that's it for that one. Uh, rat, <laughs> wait, 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 I have a comment. Phil, can okay. I jump in there? Because yeah, that's yeah. one where I've noticed too, and and this is a little bit piggybacking off your last comment. But I have noticed like in a group, some guy who's probably a newer collector. Is maybe looking at like a like a Wayne Gretzky in person auto and, and says, Hey, I'm thinking about buying this card. Does the auto look okay? And then you inevitably get like all the Wayne Gretzky auto oh, experts the worst. That, that number one think that they can authenticate an auto off of <laughs> a lousy picture that's like half shaded, half in the dark. Yeah, more. But then have the attitude of, well, only an idiot would think that this is a real Wayne Gretzky auto. And it's like, well, even if you've looked at 20,000. Wayne Gretzky autos and you're the world's most know. foremost expert. Know. Somebody posted the group because they're, they're saying they're not that hey, I'm just a collector. I'm interested in a Wayne Gretzky card. Can you, you know, so it's like, why do people feel the need to have to throw in that little, like that little twist? Because right? they're why safe behind their keyboard. They're safe. They would never talk like that in person. So my advice, if you need Gretzky help, go to a show. Go to a show. Don't post on the Facebook forum. You're going to get slaughtered by a bunch of dummies. <laughs> All right. Anything else about Facebook? Uh, I do. I do. That. I do. Oh, I have so much. To, um, uh, I do want to say back to the Gretzky thing. They're they're 25 percent of that group are amazing guys. They're amazing guys. It's a sure. lot of the um, a lot of the novice. You know, when someone watches like, you know, when your kid watches a YouTube video for like 20 minutes and they're an expert. It's that it's that whole. Thing, yeah, I'm not dude. I'm not in that group. Are you in that group, Trey? No, I'm not in that. I'm not in <laughs> very few. You guys Facebook are missing groups. out. I've gotten I mean, I will join. Facebook, I'm gonna join. Man. I now have a to-do list item. Facebook on, groups go, are great. I'm telling you, I'm a big fan. Background. I'm gonna turn off. Hold on. All right. Or keep going. I don't remember what I was saying. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah, Facebook stuff. Okay, so He's... there's a lot of Facebook groups that have Raz auctions. Yeah. Um, I stay away from them because I either you like Razes or not, they're kind of like auctions. Sure. Um, I do have one vent. 
when 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 the moderator or the owner of a Raz auction group uh, makes a post and he puts at everyone, everyone half the group gets upset. Okay, leave the group. If you don't like getting notified about a guy who's trying to make money, who's trying to make money on his Facebook page to notify you about the group that you joined, leave the group or turn off your notification. Sorry, just pet peeve. Okay, that's it. Um, and then the e wait, wait, I, have a, I have a comment on that one. And Troy okay, would know okay, better yeah. than me because he comes more from the video game world. But yeah. I think like if you're going to mention everyone or at everyone that typically, right, because we have that like it, with our Discord, that that's a big thing in Discord, too, is that the the group should have that spelled out very clearly like when that's allowed when it's not and it should be public so that anyone who's in that group to your point phil yeah should be able to know okay that th this is kind of the rules of mentioning everyone in the yeah. group and either i'm on board or i'm not and then like what you're just saying if it drives you crazy and then just leave the group i guess it doesn't drive me crazy it drives other people crazy but then they talk about when they're they're like oh this really upsets me and then it always starts a fight like i'm just trying to mm -hmm. stop it at the beginning it's kind of like the blind carbon copy on an email, right? Or CC, or, yeah. Or yeah, yeah, CC, and then or then they, when you get the email, what do they call them? The email bombs, where everyone starts responding. Take me off this email. Take me off this email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same. You're thing. making it exactly. worse. Stop responding. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Have you guys ever done a RAS? I still. Sylvain has explained no. to me what a RAS nope. is like five times. I no still interest. don't get it. Zero interest. Yeah, I don't yeah, have anything no. against it. I've just never done it. Wait, it's just an auction, right? That's all it is. It's well, like, it, 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 it's you're buying, you're buying like a, it's you're buying a spot to win an auction. It's a lottery. A it's spot. just a lottery. Yeah, lottery. It's, it's a lottery. So there's no skill involved in any way. No, I don't think okay. so. No, no. Okay. Um, right, anything then, else? Well, just I, I like making fun of the EPAC boys. Uh, they cannot be <laughs> saved. That's what my notes say. <laughs> They're a tough group to crack. I tell. I've made so many posts, posts on that group. They don't even respond to me. I just a troll. Eh? <laughs> they, they don't even like me. I, I have to. I have to make an alias there if I ever want to. So well, what? I don't. You got to fill me in. What's the? I think I'm uh, the they just don't go out. Been there. They don't go outside, man. They don't listen. Epac's great if you live in the country. Epac's great if you got lots and lots of money and you just want to click, 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 click. Uh, Epac's even great if you really just don't like big crowds. You don't like people and you don't like sure. eBay. Awesome. But these people have taken this. Like we have our hobby. We're in the hobby in a hobby. They're over here. I don't know what here is. I don't know yeah. what's going on. They don't go outside much. Uh, they're super serious. They take themselves very seriously. That's okay. what I can see that are. though. Because oh man, one of those things, yeah. one of those things I look at and be like, man, if I was just unlimited funds, yeah, you'd go crazy. And they get sucked. I'm right. on my hand, and I hate base cards. There's your spot right there. Just and they're they're the toughest it. guys to they're the toughest yeah. to trade with too. You have to you're it's I've never won a trade on EPAC. Yeah, never. No, so never, is, is it a, ever, ever. is it not welcoming? Like if a newcomer like me tried to no. go make some posts. No, and so you know what? If you if you're listening and you don't think if you think I'm being disingenuous, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Go to the EPAC Facebook. It is it's it's tough man and and they're the nice guys right like the nice guys are the worst man like I said, they don't know how to handle controversy so when something happens they're all like, oh, oh, you know they block you so you know they, yeah they just block you <laughs> so has got some friends on there he defends them i can't they're very yeah. absolute types of people yeah well i that was there we go debut episode of what oh, i'm sorry I, I, I could have made that better. I'll, uh, yeah, give it's me good. another segment. No, it's this. good. We, right. I learned a lot because, again, I don't go on Facebook a lot. And so, you know, there's there's only so many hours in a day and you kind of pick and choose so, your platforms. I got to I gotta jump in. Phil, when you said absolutes, I was like, that's a quote from somewhere. And I finally had to look it up real quick. Star Wars, only the Sith deal in absolutes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. good. I didn't know that was from. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the big problems in this day. And age. It bothers me. Everyone has absolute statements. It drives me crazy <laughs> when the whole world is a gray area, right? It's yeah. All right. We're going to move on. Uh, we're two hours in and we haven't gotten a mailbag. So <laughs> um, we're going to move on to new, very quickly new product releases. So 2023-24 Extended Series comes out this Wednesday. I want, kind of want to go through some final thoughts. We're not. We've talked about it. I'm buying one. a box. I know I'm buying a box. Okay, there oh. you go. There you go. That now, of... and we had the week delay, so it's kind of like I feel like the buildup for this has been yeah. lasting forever now. But both on Wednesday, both hobby and retail will be out, I guess, barring any other last second delay. Uh, we've all had a good amount of time now to digest the checklist, the price. We'll call it the controversial Bedsy Young Guns yeah. uh, canvas design. Uh, so, again, we're not going to spend a lot of time, but I do have some rapid fire questions for you guys. You ready? You ready, Phil? Let's do it. I'm ready. Ready, Troy? Yeah. All right. All right, so despite the backlash by some and with the secondary market momentum 
waning a little bit for Connor Bedard. In your guys' opinion, do people go nuts in the first month or so for the Young Guns canvas for Connor Bedard? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say yes, too. Now, piggybacking on that, what is the average value of the Bedard Young Guns canvas after one week and then after three months? So this I'm throwing this at you. I'll go first mm. to let you give you guys a second to think. I'm going to say after one week, like the last five average sales are about 500 US. Oh, that's what I was going to say. And, and and after three months, it's about 200 US. Oh, that's not what I was going to say. This goes against our, isn't the prevailing thought canvases sell for more right away? And no, then, no, you're, you're right. You're right. Th- that, that, that is true. But but it's it's in the cases where the young guns base and canvas come out in the same series. Gotcha. That's right. That's what the caveat was. I'm going higher. I'm gonna say 750. Even though I know there's not a backlash against it, I think. All right. Then then after three months, what is it at? Oh, probably I'll I'll go uh, 250. All right. So I, I went 500, 200. Troy went 750, 250. What do you, where are you at, Phil? I went five. I wanted 500 and 200. Okay. So I say 500 initially and then 200 when people come to their senses, which is kind of a weird statement. Now, is the release pricing good or fair, however you want to put it, out of the gate, given it is extended, but it has the Bedard Young Guns canvas, his Young Guns retros, and of course his Young Guns acetate in it. So just as a refresher, it's 150 US here in the States and... 230 Canadian and Canada. All things considered, is that a fair price at release in your guys' opinion? Nah. Well, it's cheaper than what I originally thought, yeah. but I I, I I, think all hockey card boxes should be 99 bucks or 149 and if you're the cup, you're 499 That's my theory. Yeah, I, I, I can live with it, but I would like it more towards 120 Okay. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. So how do you That's guys America. feel about it? Sorry, U.S., 120 U.S., yeah. sorry. Yeah. In general, are you guys pro extended series or because there's a lot yeah, of yeah, I love extended. Extended's great because we get ex- a lot of comments on people that are actually feel that it dilutes flagship and that that it should be. No, I think it's an opportunity. Okay, and then you'd have six months between essentially every flagship where this shortens that window to four months. But I, what about you, Troy? Are you pro extended like, or yeah. not for you? Like extended, want the name change to series three. Are these people in the room with us right now that think extended? Uh, <laughs> is it you, Josh? Is it you? Are you no. the person? No, no, we got, no, we got a lot of comments on that. No, really, I, I right? generally like extended. Yeah, show me oh. the people that think extended dilutes flagship and their their whole collections trilogy and. Uh, well, well, there was that one. Was it? I mean, extended's in a weird. Spot, I want to right? say more than a dozen people have have literally. Are you serious? Them. Yeah. Here's oh the thing though with extended, it, it has that it can be a really it's one of those it's a weird product. It's in the third, it's like the series three. So it has a chance to be it can be good, but it can be really bad if they screw up the timing on who they put in there and stuff, and then it just oh my god, this is the worst product ever, and then it takes a release to get back. I, it's also new, right? This yeah. will be the fourth release of it, and yeah, it seems like the hobby in, at large doesn't love new things, yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, there's a lot of synergy hate and call it right or wrong, but you know, maybe a part of that is it's new as well. Like what 2017 or something like that was the uh, or newer. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm your maybe. perfect example. Like I when synergy came out, it was stupid, but I bought a box with you. I'm like, oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's such a cool set. I think that was a lure, right? Not synergy. Oh, yeah. I keep saying, yeah, synergy sucks. Forget it. Yeah, yeah. I meant to lure. Synergy <laughs> does suck. Synergy right. does not do well. Mm-hmm. All right. Gotta make a quick uh Mentioned for Gong Show Partner Sponsor, PWCC slash Fanatics Collect. Very grateful to them for their support of our show. A lot of big changes, of course, coming as we've been talking about with the Fanatics Takeover. I've noticed the logo on Instagram has already been replaced by yep. some sort of like blue Fanatics F. Uh, in the meantime, though, it is still business as usual with tons of great hockey cards in the PWCC fixed price marketplace, as well as their weekly and premier auctions. One thing I noticed, Troy, that's pretty cool in the fixed price marketplace, they're starting to note cards that I think they have some sort of like tie into some sales data that where they're, they're showing like good deals on cards in the fixed price marketplace so that you mm. can actually get some sort of visual cue that a card, it might not be a $5 card that somebody's asking $20 for something like that. So uh, I, I, I like a feature like that and I would love to see marketplaces do more of that. Uh, you have to have a good data source, of course, preferably like Terapeak, but uh, I don't know. Is that a feature you like? 
I, I like it as long as I have trust in it. Yeah. Like, well, I, I think you have to verify it, but it just yeah. can, I think, help you maybe pull out some cards you initially have interest in. Uh, what do you think, Phil? Meh. I don't know. Mm. I think I think you're gonna like what you're gonna like, and I'm I'm not I'm not heavily influenced by the platform I'm buying from generally. Okay. Yeah. Is I it re- gonna be F P W C C or P W C C? I think it'll be I think it'll be Fanatics Collect. It'll be it'll be Fanatics. They're gonna probably drop. My assumption is P W C C would go away. Yeah. All right. There you go. Sorry, and I just I want to apologize to everyone on YouTube. Here's the Bedard Young Guns canvas. It was in here, and I forgot to show it there. That's right. Ugh. We forgive you. Ugly, ugly. <laughs> Practicing forgiveness. So ugly. Uh, reminder we are welcoming, the, welcoming to the hobby. <laughs> reminder too that the current PWCC weekly action is live as well. You can check out all the cards at pwccmarketplace.com. And on Thursday's show, we like we always do, we're going to dig into our favorite uh, vintage and modern card picks from this week. All right, mailbag, record time mailbag. So we're going to wait. That's all right. I, I, I got a little more extra time than I just texted out because I my wife's gonna take my son to the game, so I can be a little okay. late to warm ups. Okay, were we in a rush? I didn't even know. Troy, you can no, tell we, me to shut up. Hey, I talked. I didn't it. think we were, but then I started looking at the time, and I'm like, "Holy cow, we're gonna get this might be a yeah. record long show." Just, <laughs> but we're having fun, so it's we're having a great time. <laughs> all right, the first question comes from YouTube, Bruce Phillipson, thirty one oh nine. Yeah, oh gosh. Any suggestions on how to find a good breaker? Okay, mm. so I got to start here. And yeah. I'm going to go a little bit on a soapbox again. I'm going to be really honest. This question makes me cringe. And it's not because I don't think it's a great question, Bruce. Thank you for asking it. It is a really good one. I cringe because whenever we mention a specific breaker on the show, and it doesn't matter who it is, we yeah, get it doesn't matter what breaker of, it's. <laughs> we get hate messages all yeah. the time about, I can't believe that you like that person, or that they're terrible for the hobby. I just want to make a request to the hobby. Can all you breakers please stop hating each other? (laughs) Is there beef with them? Is there drama? They all hate each other. No. Really? Uh, well, well, that's probably an over. Yeah, that's, that's no, no, I know what you're statement. They don't. I get what you're saying. Other, but... They're 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 in a competition with each other, no matter what. Trying to have trying to have talked about. We don't even want to talk about breakers anymore because we yeah. can't win. It's like anytime we mention a name, yeah, we get flooded with, and, and it's like I just don't. Maybe understand. that's an American thing. I, I I know of breakers in Canada. They don't. Maybe there was beef in behind the closed curtain. I'm not sure. I don't really know. I don't. Maybe it's like. I, I, what I would say is that it's probably more the platform breakers that are not that are competing with each other on platforms like whatnot or fanatics live. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. That, That's where, what I thought you meant. Yeah. Yeah. Where if somebody like does their own thing on YouTube or Facebook and it's kind of in their own world, I don't think it's as big of an issue, but okay. I just wish that they would kind of like focus on themselves <laughs> a little yeah. bit more, Where it's probably healthier for them too and, and and maybe i'm being super naive about it too and and again i'm not saying that maybe sometimes they don't have a good complaint or a good issue but uh but yeah and so bruce wants to know are there how to find a good breaker and so yeah. uh what i would do bruce is i would go to uh, i would ask people around in different groups if they have people they like you can go to whatnot or fanatics live or another platform you can watch a whole bunch of breaks and watch breaks for a while before you do that and see who you like see the style that you like and how the the chat because I think a big part of it is the community and how people sure. chat in, in there. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions, and then you know if you get to the point, you know, buy into a break and, and see if you and see if you like it. Uh, that would be my best best advice. I, and we all kind of have our favorites, and uh, I'm just I have like PTSD, so I don't want to mention. My <laughs> yeah, I, I, would I say... Troy, do you, am I being over dramatic here or no? It's it's. Every time we mention, I don't care who the name is, we get people emailing or messaging us on on the hate. I'm just like, really? Wow, that's great. I didn't know that. I get. I mean, I I get. There's it's a competitive environment, but what is it like? Know. Like that guy's a loser. He didn't mail me my card. Oh, man. it'll be like how they get their product pricing and all. What do you stuff. care how they get their allocation? Yeah. And if you're business. worried about, well, here's my thing. I'll I'll do a piggyback what Josh said. Yes, watch breaks and stuff. But and I've said this many times. For some reason, breaking is the one thing i've ever noticed where everyone thinks that you have to say what your pricing is and your wholesale pricing and you have to tell everyone in the world what your profit is i would for some reason i know i don't get why this in why this breaking why is this the one thing where people think that they're 
owed that. I don't see Best Buy oh. go, listing out the wholesale <laughs> the they get on the TVs and all that. It's it's yeah, nuts, it's like but newsflash: the the big successful breakers are making piles of money, yeah. which only means that they're buying boxes very cheap and they're selling them for a lot more. I mean, yeah. but they're in business. That's their you know a lot of these and guys they're working make a harder lot of than you probably. Oh my if god, they getting, work hard, dude. If you're getting mad at a breaker, oh, they're making so much blah blah blah. They're, I, I, they're working harder than you while you're complaining about them working hard. And I'll say this: some of them, some of them do actually tell you like we're this is what i got the boxes for and if yeah. you really want to go into the pricing thing, this is what i was trying to get to there's websites out there now i think break comp is one breakcomp.com where they're trying to do some comparison against pricing of different breakers and you can also do your own i mean you can watch a break you can kind of you know what the retail price is that's easy enough now you could probably try to figure out some wholesale cut what they're buying it for some breakers don't get it at uh, wholesale distribution prices because we've that's a whole nother issue but anyways watch breaks on the platforms whatnot fanatics there's tons of them out there make sure you're comfortable you can just sit there and watch you don't have to buy you can go into a break and not buy i know it can be tough for certain type of people you don't have to buy just watch and find who you're comfortable day, with yeah Troy, like at the end of the day if you want value in this hobby buy singles whether you're buying yes. boxes yes. like ice and getting nothing for 125 dollars or buying a yeah. break spot that's not the reason to you, you don't do it to make money you do it because yeah. a lot you know because just the economics of the box aside you have to factor in the the production factor the entertainment factor is do you is it an hour of your time that you really enjoy in a community of people you like and and some people just want value and then that's fine but th there's i think it's more complicated than just who's making what margin on on a box and and if, if that's really important to you you can kind of go to dave and adams and figure out what a box costs and kind of do the math yourself and see if it's a a value that works i don't know that, that's breaks are great if you're a team collector like I, I i have a niche to scratch with my sends i'll do a few breaks a year and i'll just pick ottawa why not that's great i'll do a case of spa to try and find a jake sanderson future watch you know so I, I hope that answers your question bruce thank you for asking it okay another one from youtube bobby dice what a name Love it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, so apparently, Phil, you're getting your mail here now. So uh, you're pretty <laughs> much a, a, show, a show regular. He says, Phil, you recently changed your mind on PSA 10s. What did you mean? Oh, boy. Do we, we're, we're in a rush still or? <laughs> no, no, we're okay. I'll, I'll give an example. Um, I, I'm a diehard uh, Daniel. I'm probably one of the biggest Daniel Alfredson collectors in the world, I guess. And um, one of my goals was to, so he has 57 true rookie cards. So he's a 94, he's a 95, 96. Yeah. Um, and he has 57 true rookie cards. I have 55. A goal of mine uh, was to get all PSA 10s of that. And I'm only at like 23, 24. And that goal has recently changed, which is in tandem with your question, because I've had enough of dealing with playing the game and, and lying to myself that uh, a PSA 10 means the card is in very, very, very good condition mm. most of the time. And that is not the case. They are not consistent. So that goal, um, I'm not, I'm not trying to achieve that goal anymore. I'm going to focus my collection much more on very good looking cards in raw, or I will still buy a PSA 10. I will not break the bank for it anymore. And I will still buy a PSA 10. If I think the card looks up to the uh, metrics that I want in my collection. If you agree with the great, yeah. The, the, if I agree the, with the great, there's nothing wrong with PSA 10. I much, I've always, always preached. I much rather a nice raw patch card, even though I was a PSA fanboy. Now I've just taken that out of my collection as well. I, I'm. It doesn't have to be a PSA 10 to be in my collection. I'd rather it raw now because they're not consistent, and it is so so apparent in everything I do and watch and see in the hobby. They are not. I do not agree with their opinions of their PSA um, grading system. Yeah. Good answer. Thank okay, you. Okay, next question. BLN cards. I think there's an example here, Troy, but I forgot to note it in the on-air production meeting, but I think it's okay. <laughs> we can do without it. He said, maybe a question, but maybe he says also a hobby mystery. <laughs> he says, why are there two different versions of blue tracks? In OPG Platinum Preview. So that again, that's Platinum Preview from OPG Paper. He said McDavid, McCarr, Cooley, and Kaprizov are one way more of like a shimmer style where 
Yaroslav Askarov, Austin Matthews, and Hughes are another way. So I actually, it is true. Like if you looked up the the sort of 23, 24. Yeah. Okay. I, I remember I'll find it. You keep talking. Yep. He says that uh, I went and verified it. I found examples of each and reached out to Upper Deck to ask them about this. And here's what they said, that there's a printer error where they use two different substrates for this parallel. They should have all been printed with the tracks pattern substrate. So I think the ones with the shimmer essentially are a little bit of an error card. Um, yeah, you, you can see them if you go to TCDB. TCBD site is being really slow right now, so screw them. I'm yeah. not going to show the picture because I don't know what's going on with their site, but whatever. All right, next question. 816 cards and collectibles. Hey, I've, sorry. I just got to throw this out there. I've noticed because we look at like a lot of account names and have to write them that people either spell collectibles with an I or a, have you guys notice that too? No. Either of you have any idea, which is the right way or you're on uh, mute. Uh, no, I, I, well, I think he spelt it. He spelled correct. it with an I. It's, it's half and half. Well, what's the right way? I don't know. Well, Google it. Well, Troy is there. Uh, the first thing that comes up when I do Google it, it says collectible versus collectible. Like the vote, <laughs> they're easy to, con okay. The one with the A describes items able to be collected, i.g. payments, keys, etc. Collectible with the I spelling describes items considered worthy of collecting by enthusiasts. Examples, oh. coins, and stamps. What there the hell? I'm 43 years old. I've <laughs> never known the difference. <laughs> Today you learn. <laughs> Don't Son say the a... show never taught you anything. There That's you go. crazy. So, going back to earlier in the show, so you became an adult at 39 is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. I'm, I'm moving up. I'm moving up. <laughs> All right, no, so he has a, a good question, though. He said, do you think eBay listings that are you pick from list have better sales or sale rates than just a regular single listing of a card? I love this question because I just skip those listings when I see them. I don't ever buy from them. Oh, really? I, I, I always are... click. I always yeah. click them. As long as they have individual pictures of the cards, yeah, cool. But, yeah, but I just right. think it's a way to not junk up the listings and make it efficient to like if you have if you're one of these big like one of the, like we know people that buy 15 cases of like flagship releases. So yeah. if you if you want to sell your Askarov Young Guns and you have 14 copies as opposed to doing 14 listings, it's much easier just to do the pick from list. Or if you want to sell dazzlers and you have a whole bunch of them so i, I just think it, it's more of a, a a listing efficiency feature i have no idea if it helps you sell for more i don't know phil do you have any clue on that no i as a buyer i i love it i i think it's great i, I don't know if it brings in more capital though i mean i don't i think it's a good way of a dealer just to post his cards easier as well no yeah or maybe it's the same work i don't know Another great question from Discord High Gloss CBJ. He says, "What happens to EPAC cards in the future? What happens if the owner dies and the family is not aware of the account or mm. collection? I would assume it just sits there, yeah. and and you know, I, I think Upper Deck would probably have some sort of strategy to reach out, like to an email address, if you haven't been there in a year, like, hey, we missed you. Log into your collection on EPAC, something like that. Where if the whoever." is the executor of the will or something like that, then would get that email right. forwarded to them for some time or another. But I don't know. It's a um, fine print. It's got to be like five years, no login. Yeah. It's our card. It's, it's fine. Print yeah, question. it's fine print, but I bet it probably reverts to unclaimed property laws in your Canada oh. or in the U S because it's your, you own some of those are physical copies. I'm guessing. So I used to, there's my wife's from Iowa and they have the, the great Iowa treasure hunt where you can go and enter your name and see if you have any unclaimed property that's sitting at the state because it took you too long to get it. So a lot of states have stuff like that in the U S but yeah, if, if they don't know about, it, if your like heirs don't know about your account, I'm guessing fine print upper deck says, if you don't log in after, I don't know, it's like True. bank accounts with cents in it, right? There's like some rules. If you eventually don't claim it, they send it off to the state or whatever, but yeah, great question. There's actually, this is coming up in video games a lot. I think I might have mentioned this last show or a couple of shows ago, where now with all our games online, you know, Steam, whatever, Epic Game yeah. Store, you buy your games or online. What happens when you die? Do the companies get those games back? Does it go to your heirs? And some companies have a policy, some don't. And it's 
kind of a whole new mm. legal area. So become a lawyer, kids. Okay, Instagram. Hen Keo, he has two questions. First one is, what does the process or how does the process work when Upper Deck signs a player? Does a player have any say how many cards and what series they will be a part of? I don't think that unless they're like Bedard or McDavid that gets signed as a spokesperson, I doubt they get say. I think that that type of oversight is at the NHL, NHL PA level. That's at least my understanding. That's what I would thought, think too. I mean, I my, my thought too is they sure they have a say. They could say I'm not signing, but then they're probably in violation of their agreement and, and we saw Panini has now sued or no fanatics actually sued someone, a baseball player. Marvin Harrison Jr.'s yeah. kid. The yeah, they actually player. went after him. So I don't know if Upper Deck would ever go that far. For, but for not fulfilling his uh not doing his, yeah, not Oh wow. His wow. Hey, wow. That's awesome. So that's All right, an option then, too. Ken Keo, second question. He says, by the way, in the early 1980s, my local hockey team in oh boy, Kirstenstad, Sweden, Kirstenstad. had an American player who now coaches in the NHL. <laughs> Who is he? All right, Phil. Do you have any idea who this would be? Matt Snazlin. No. Troy, did you look at the no, note? Nat, I, I didn't know who it was, but um, I know you you were able I looked to it look. up. We, we, let's just say we all didn't know who it was. And we had oh, to so I'm up. not right. I'm wrong. No, Naslin's not American, is he? Oh, wait. American player. Ah. American player in Sweden who, who played for that Kirstenstad, who now plays or who coaches and in the NHL. Coaches. And he's a pretty popular um, name. Can I get some initials? Uh, think he of, rhymes with Schmortz. Dave Schultz? Think of Neil. Neil? I got coaches, nothing. Coaches in the NHL. Neil, I, IFC. Irish, Irish The F, F in IFC. F. Likes and to F. yell at referees a lot. Doesn't take crap. Bill, are, you, are you okay? No, I'm frozen. JT, JT's is uh, JT's the initials. I'm having a brain fart, boys. Just say it. Coach of the Flyers, oh, Torts. Jesus, yes. John Tortorella. I okay. Next question. <laughs> Next right, question. Instagram. Jets collector. Do you guys use the PSA app? The, and nope. what you, if you do, what are you using for? Yeah, I, no I didn't idea. even know there was one. I didn't know there was uh, one either. I was what does wondering, it do? I, what does it I do? Didn't, well, I didn't down. I should have downloaded it. Bad research by Troy when I saw this because I wonder if it's just a reskin of the website or if it's actually a true app where it actually has some functionality. But well, I don't think I know you app. can do is you can scan the barcode. Oh, that's and, cool. And pull up the pop report. Yeah, good. That's a it. great use of an app. Great that's job. Cool. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Uh, I believe uh, Jeremy Lee, the Oracle, does it all the time. Okay. Okay. Instagram. That's collector. Nope, we just talked about it. Instagram, Discord, Ojibwe, eighty six. <laughs> if the Oilers lose Game Seven oh, tonight, and McDavid has zero points, will some hobbyist and analyst criticize McDavid for not scoring in Game Six and Game Seven? Yes, and no uh, one we kind of already talked. Yes, about yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you're you're on. Uh, you're we're on the same wave, like Ojibwe, definitely. Discord, Mad Dog Nab seventy eight. Stuart Skinner's Young Guns was released in 2020. He was a Calder finalist and has been a starting goalie for some time. What does he have to do to get included in OPG Platinum? <laughs> if they ever include him, say in the 2023 set, will it include him as a rookie, even though he's been playing for years? No kidding. I That's collect Oilers and Seismic Goal, but there's a hole in my collection. So this blew my mind. I thought, well, something's wrong here. He has zero yeah. OPG Platinum cards. None. Jerks, bunch of jerks maybe, over there. Maybe he did someone uh, wrong. It has upper to deck. be like an error, right? <laughs> yeah. Where were they like Fred left? In? Because it's been what what he was 20, so 2020, 21, 22. Yeah, yeah so but... his three releases has not been in it. Maybe he stole oh. the girlfriend of uh production design management. The coordinators <laughs> there do the checklist, I believe. <laughs> well, I was trying to think about that. Is he oh now? I'm sorry, because OPG Platinum is kind of a reduced set, right? You don't get everyone. It's like paper. Or is it like paper where you have a card for everyone? 600 cards. I guarantee you, though, that there's like way less notable yeah. rookies than Sir Skinner. And then he wasn't a prospect. Ask. He wasn't a prospect. Stuart Skinner? No. He's a goalie, man. No one's paying it's attention. Like every marquee rookie in OPG Platinum is some big name. Well, and yeah. plus Skinner's only been around, so he's been around since 2020. He he's never played more than I mean this year he played 59 games. That was his most ever. 
so it's any it's not like i mean i could see how they kind of missed him in 2020 2021 2022 23 he played 50 finally and he was yeah. he was second in the calder in 22 23 oh well i did not expect that yeah i think he was pretty good that year i would guess like you know how leo carlson was sort of left off trilogy by mistake <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. that, that somehow he's not on the checklist so we'll probably let them know it's yeah Okay, Instagram, Matt Sottle, Soto Sottle. Tell us, Matt. Uh, do you guys know the pull rate was for 05 SP Authentic Sign of the Times, specifically Crosby? Can't find anything related to odds on cardboard connection or other sites. Hmm. So actually, I went and found the box and looked on the, I think and maybe Steel City had it too, Matt, where there, there was 93 cards in the Sign of the Times set for 05, 06 SP Authentic. And the pack odds to pull any are one in 40. So if you did 40 times 93, that's yep. what one in 3,700 packs or something like that. Yep. Would be the um, Cosby. Be the odds. Or no, the odds. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would be the odds to pull it. Okay. Sorry. Instagram, Southie Schmike. Okay, Phil. <laughs> I don't what? know. Oh, yeah. You saw this because we texted it to you. He says, love the podcast, and my comment <laughs> is in loving jest. You never have to. You can make fun of us. We make fun of ourselves, so don't ever worry about that. I've come up with the Hockey Cards Gong Show drinking game. He says, you have to take a drink every time the following is said or done. Number one, you have to take a drink when shots fired. Shots fired! Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> we both did at the same time, Troy. I, know, I, thought, it's like, I thought I was being sneaky. <laughs> So shots fired is said a French name <laughs> place is butchered. <laughs> An on-air production meeting happens. Caprice off is mentioned. <laughs> Loud collector gets distracted or goes off topic. I think you'd be, you would be passed out on, just on this show. You'd be passed <laughs> yeah. out. Like, you all would. of these have happened. Yeah, but... <laughs> alcohol poisoning. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna my chime in. My one thing is I've always heard that if you get a drinking game named after whatever you do, that you've made it. So maybe we're doing something it right. That's good. We're doing something right. We're consistent. Um, we got to play this one of the shows. Like at Gong Show After Dark, we got to play this and just yeah, you made my day, Southie. So <laughs> watch us all pass out. <laughs> Are we doing a Gong Show After Dark? I need to swear a little bit. I get a headache after the show with all my holding back. Uh, well, we'll think about that. We'll, we'll all think right, about all right. Uh, let us know, people, if you want a NC <laughs> rated R Gong Show. We won't yeah. go NC <laughs> okay, Instagram Liebner. Uh, great question. Do you think Tay Grading is here to stay? Have you seen it picking up market share? Okay, Troy, no. you kind of put some work into this one. Well, I, I, I just said, like, I want them to stay, but I'm not sure where they are as far as market share. I do know, I do like the slabs personally. I like the slabs, I think they look fantastic, very clear. And I also like that at least someone's trying to solve the human factor in grading and do the, the machine way. I'm only going to say AI, but because it's not AI, but like the machine way. However, when you look at like sites like GemCap that or GemRate that do the recap grading, they aren't even included. So I can kind of assume they're not that big. And looking at their market share, I, I tried to figure it out. So if they, if you look at 2023 grading market share, PSA held 78%, CGC is second, and then SGC is third with way less than 70, like 1.7 million items graded or 1.2 for SGC. Beckett, Most of the CGC though are, are PCG, Pokemon, right? Yeah. yeah. Beckett finished fourth with just over seven hundred seventy thousand items graded, so that's fourth place. It's seven hundred seventy thousand. I actually went through the tag grading reports. I can't exactly remember when they started, but totaling up every category, they have one hundred forty nine thousand five hundred eighty five items graded. That's going to put them way down. Um, that's brutal, man. Yeah, that's absolutely I, terrible. If I remember right too, and I looked it up, I think. Pokemon might be their biggest too. The most They're pretty oh limited too. God. Like I don't think they, they have slabs yes. for thick cards or patches. Yeah, I meant to put that in here. They, you gotta remember they have like a what do you want to call it? A, a constraint on some of the stuff they can do. They years and stuff, but I market share they're very low. That's when did they I approach? Mean. When did they approach Jeremy? Remember at the show he tells that story how he hooked up with Tag. They were with the two young lads. Oh, a, a from, few was years, that three ago, years ago. Yeah, yeah. I would like to get them on the show because I want to. Uh, I've actually reached out, haven't been very successful, but yeah. but I, I want I want to see what's good because I'm a big fan of their concept too, and and I know that they've taken like a very slow and measured approach, yeah. and and so maybe that's just part of it too. But I'd love yeah. to hear from them, kind of where it's at. I also got to take the opportunity, and I don't mean this to be 
fired. Shots fired. But we hear all the time about, and I get it too, because you know, like Beckett at one point was the the king of grading, especially in hockey. And a lot of people still try to reference that even today. But but when you consider the fact that that SGC grades almost double now the cards that Beckett does, yeah. Uh, Beckett is hardly relevant. I honestly don't. I don't. I don't know if 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 you're if there's a romantic si- side that you kind of latch on to, Phil. But I don't I'd buy them. Beckett, I don't consider them relevant anymore. No, no. of course not. I I buy just the the exactly. I romanticize. I think we all romanticize the the Beckett uh, name in our childhoods. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, like I'd buy them if I had uh, silly money right now. I would buy them and I would beat all of them. I would buy Beckett and I would then I would buy Tag. I'd fire everybody and I would hire a logistics expert and I would, <laughs> I would get my product out there. Imagine yeah. curing cancer and you can't give the pill to the world, yeah. right? The, to me, that's what tag is. There's a cancer yeah. in our industry and it's called a lack of consistent grading. That's objective. Okay. We have a cancer in our hobby tag cured that cancer. They are consistent and they grade. Con- sorry for my vocabulary. They grade consistently all the time i think that's that doesn't that's yep. bad english but you know what i'm saying <laughs> no i get it they cannot get their product out there now they have tears they have tears yeah. of grading it just they, once you get gimmicky and silly i'm out and i'm out you cured cancer and you can't get the medicine to the patients that's what's very upsetting so i'm out mm. of this whole grading thing it's ridiculous beckett should buy tag and fix the logistics and then away we go then psa will be gone like a fart in the wind <laughs> okay next question instagram doghouse hockey with the bedard hype driving print runs on product and causing a resurgence in discontinued sets at what point do you think we are in a second junk wax era i, I called it a junk variety era i don't know if that's <laughs> fair or not I, I don't know for any you know it, it's hard to say that we might be in any era because the hobby is generally in a good place and i think when you look back at quote unquote the junk wax era is the the hobby that kind of tanked the hobby then and and so uh, i don't know what do you guys think is are we in any sort of like negative era or well we're over printing man it's crazy like yeah your last episode was great i i listened to in the car like look i there's 57 daniel alfredson cards from 90 95 96 i collect jake sanderson as well there's over 800 Right. Brady Kachuk yeah. is over 400 from 2017, 20, 2018, 2019. Brady Kachuk yeah. is like 436. That's insane. That's too much. It's too much. I don't know if it's, it's junk, though. Right. Like, is it going to be looked at as junk? How much? Would, I think junk is uh, how much it was printed. I think that word associates with the print mm. runs. I like your ver- What do you call it, Josh? Say it again. Ver- junk. Uh, the junk variety right junk Where variety i think that's accurate i think i like that there's too you, you much have to know variety. what cards to collect yeah no. yeah 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 discord california dave he says epac i understand it exists for a reason but am i alone in not being a fan that it's an option the reason i'm not a fan is because they have to allocate numbered parallels for it so if you're chasing let's say an outburst red young guns of bedard or a high profile player that only has 25 copies you have to figure like maybe 10 of them are reserved for epac so it makes the chances of hitting these cards in hobby boxes way lower and if you're chasing like one one gold outburst how many of the 50 young guns have been reserved for epac yeah i think he's dead on like i would love if they would say what's allocated to each or is it truly just there's a stack of product some go like whatever percentage oh, like had. yeah some what some percentage goes to physical and we don't know how many i mean could be all of them are in epac or all of them are in retail or sorry hobby yeah. whatever physical copies there's I, I that drives me nuts and maybe i just haven't looked at the site enough to figure that out but that i he's definitely on to something well, how does it work? Like, I, I always thought like, okay, there's 20% left uh, of product to give to our all our diamond dealers. Let's put 10% on EPAC. Like, is there? See, a- I, yeah, I don't know how that works. I mean, like, I'm terrified. Parker's Champions is going to go on EPAC. Some some guys are going to hit some cards I need, and I'm never going to get them. I'm <laughs> never going to get them because they listen to the podcast. They're like, you make fun of us. We're not going to give you the card. I'll be like, well, well you need to go inside all- and get them. 
Yeah, everything's printed as once, and then they allocate. I don't know if there there may be a general rule, but I don't think. Okay. They, I, I think they make exceptions. Like I know we know they didn't put the Bedard Gold Alpers one hundred one in EPAC, and so yeah. they have well, flexibility. <laughs> Just remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> EPAC reflex has always been well. What about people that live in rural areas? Yes. They don't have access to hobby shops, but then I was starting to think about well, we live in the Amazon era where you can get anything shipped like next day to your house pretty much no matter where you are and yeah. so what i what i think would be better than epac in my just for my taste would be more of like a direct consumer program where you can just get a box sent to you kind of like panini and tops you can yeah. go on their sites and buy or sorry fanatics i guess whatever okay facebook ryan walper why don't the retro young guns found in extended series get more hobby love personally i love the retro designs more I just think, like, my two cents, guys, is that the we've talked about it endlessly on the show. Yeah. Uh, base Young Guns, Future Watch Auto, and True Cup RPA is on a 99 or 249. Those are the cards of cards of cards. And nothing for, even though there's a million base Young Guns and there could be less retro Young Guns, they're always going to be more popular. I agree, though, with Ryan that a lot of the these retro designs I really like. And I, I try to look at the other side of the coin in that it just makes them cheaper to collect. Yeah. right even it's, prim if you it's like primary them. primary secondary right what is it a retro of the primary thing sure. right that's well uh, yeah and, and we've talked about this too i think retros get overproduced or they they go to the well one too many times maybe on some of these so that certain part of collectors don't like that they're that. thirsty troy they're thirsty yeah thirsty okay Twitter or X, whatever it is, Sebastian Engelhardt. <laughs> How do you guys feel about putting tape on top loaded cards? I recently had a bad experience with sticky gunk getting all over one of my cards when I took it out. Yeah. Is there a special tape you like to use? I've always used either the blue or green painter's tape that leaves very little. It's designed not to leave residue. Yeah. And that's what uh, you should use. Nothing else. Scotch tape. I'm, a, oh. I'm green. Green painter tape gang is me. I go green all the way. All the way. Scotch tape is the bane of the, you yep. know how many times I've written down the guy's name? To, I'm like, I'm going to make a video <laughs> and I'm going to publicly scorn this person. I never do because then my emotions wear off. Do not put scotch tape on top loaders. Yep. It is a nightmare. And even if you're, whoa, whoa you can cut it. it. It scrapes the card. If you, if it comes out of the penny sleeve, the scotch yeah. tape can scrape the surface of the card. Don't do it. I know you Painter's, want to. It's tempting. I get it. Sure. Don't do it. Yeah. Yep. But, and I would even throw scotch tape is the obvious one. But I've even had resi seen residue issues with the the brown Scott the brown masking tape, the packing tape, the thick. Oh yeah, tape. yeah, 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 yeah. Or people yeah, use so hockey tape. They're like, oh, it's a hockey card. I oh, use hockey tape. Like, yeah, it's not funny. It's not funny. Oh, hockey tape's the worst. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was made uh, to stick. <laughs> like, uh, well, did you okay, see? Guys, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say. Uh, remember when Ziri mailed me the card? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a top loader, a top loader in a big envelope. That's it. Nothing. No padding. Nothing. Oh, I talk too much crap. But anyways. <laughs> okay. I'm proud of myself with this one, guys. From This is actually Facebook. It's not Instagram. Andrew oh. She, who for the first time in two years, I pronounced your name right. So <laughs> I apologize again, Andrew, but it just shows you that if you may not be a thousand times, but let us know a thousand one times. I can't wait till your sponsor says, nope, that wasn't it. <laughs> no, I'm pretty confident here. <laughs> so he says, which of the Bedard parallels from extended excite you the most? And he said, and then he says, let's see if you get the name right. <laughs> um, so for me, it's with a bullet, the Bedard young guns acetate. Like, and yeah, yeah. Would yeah. you guys oh. agree with that? Is that? Yeah, the, absolutely. The yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, now I have a follow-up yeah. question. What does that sell for? I'm going to guess two to 3000 us raw. Do you guys I think it goes th for more? I still don't think enough people know about them, man. I, I I think it should go for five, six K, but I think you're right. Probably. I don't yeah. see it ever going lower than 20. Like when you'd see that card at auction at like 2,400. Oh no, it didn't sell for more. Of course it will. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think over five, over five K. What do you think, Troy? Five was my first thought. Okay. All right. Instagram cards. AH is a potential championship already included in McDavid's hobby values. Uh, I think to some degree it is, but I'm still going to, if they win tonight, it's going to, there's going to be, in no, my opinion, a bump. It's the next leg. The next leg up if you're using stock uh, stock terms. All right. We ready for the next one, Trey? Yeah. there. Something got screwed up. Sorry. That question wasn't on our flight. Okay. 
This is a very important question for Bobby. Now, here we go back to listen. Look at this guy's eighty six yeah, collectibles. collectibles <laughs> right. So, so now you now we're going to notice this all the time. Uh, he asked a very important question. Now, before we give your answers, I just want to make sure that we all agree that no matter what we say, we're all going to be friends at the end of this <laughs> question, right? Is we're going to yeah. agree to remain friends. He says, do you say I'm going to mow the lawn or cut the grass? A uh, hundred times out of a hundred is mow the lawn in my house. Really? I'm the opposite. I say cut oh. the grass. Oh, you're savages. It's mow the lawn. Well, first of all, cabin. Yeah, you boys. say cottages. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> what? Cabin? What are you cabin? What if a cabin's made out of uh, siding and there's no? Water? Are you Hansel you and, and Gretel? And they're the people that go to cottages. Anyways, Americans. And you, 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 you can put on your hockey pants, go to your cottage, and cut the grass for all. I, I still don't food. understand the hockey pants thing. What do you guys call them? Breezers. Hockey shorts. What breezers? Breezers. Breezers. Brazers. Brazers? You can't say uh, that. B r e e z e r s breezers. Breezers. Okay, so I'm silly because I call them <laughs> hockey pants, and you call them something that doesn't even sound like what the word is whatsoever. Breezers. <laughs> Ridiculous. I, I didn't even know that that was a like literally my whole life. Like I didn't know there was another term other than breezers until I heard I saw an interview with Sarah Nurse, Canadian Sarah Nurse, yeah. who played college hockey in the U.S. And the interviewer asked her, what was the weirdest thing about like the cultural thing coming from Canada to America? And she was like, when someone said, here's your breezers. And she's like, I didn't know what they were talking about. Excuse me. What did you say to me? <laughs> so what do you, what do you call the fabric you put on your foot and then your shoe? What do you call that? A sock. A sock? Oh, okay. Well, I was just making sure. I don't know. I mean, that could have been called something different. I have no idea. Breezers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all right instagram jeremy katan <laughs> six yeah oh, very very oh, thought-provoking oh, question there's, here. there's where i got mixed mixed up there what okay. didn't we just do that no right yeah. here. troy what kind of program you're running over there yeah <laughs> well, we, we have <laughs> producer louie now so we just blame him that's all right all right jeremy katan six you've stated in the past you both don't like sticker autos if you had the choice of style or, or hitting a pack or box would it be a sticker auto or a low number parallel also do you think it matters what color ink the auto is and if so what's your preference so i'm gonna let you two go i would just say i would probably take a very cool low number parallel over sticker auto i'm actually pretty anti sticker auto and it's getting worse when it comes to autos though for on card autos i love the silver gold Sharpie. or black ink either gold or, or gold or silver on black background yeah, I was gonna say black to say. ink is like the one I hate the most. I think. No, I, I I screwed up there. It's gold or silver on black is what I, I gotta I love say. The most. Jeremy and uh, Adam Gray actually were talking about this on the premiere. They brought that up, and like I'm with them. Like black, auto, I'd rather have blue, silver, sure. gold, but black. But but I don't like that I, thick. I don't like the thick silver gold. I like the thin, mm, the thin, like, like thin? medium, medium. I like the medium fine point. What is that? Okay. The one, you see all those new Gretzky's coming out? Is it stature of the cup? They're all the blue. The big thick blue crayon. See, I like those. Oh, those are the brilliant. I like those too. Yeah, Troy, you right, like but... it because you can see it. Your eyes are going on. You. That's why you like it. Yeah, the font's big. Yeah. All right, but, but well, I'll I'll put this to you though, Phil. Like in your your Parker's Champions obsession. So yeah, yeah. If you had the choice to get the the card that started this all for you, the yeah. black Gretzky out of ten low numbered parallel versus. Like a Gretzky legend sticker auto out of no. 25, which no, would I don't you want take? It. No, low number parallel, it. right? Stickers junk, yeah. man. Yeah. I, me I, don't Phil actually, diet, I don't want the diet cola of autographs. Yeah. So me and Phil actually had this discussion, I think, when we were together the first time on the show, something about sticker autos. And I've, I basically have come to accept sticker autos that sometimes on cards, like say Gabrix that I PC, oh, I want PC Gabrix that I'm going to have to live with it. I'm going to have to get a sticker auto because that's all that's available. I don't go out of my way to find sticker autos. I'd rather have on card, but I am just kind of de being defeated by them and <laughs> giving in when I have to. Well, you can't say here's a big problem with sticker autos. You ready? So I, I, the Gordy Howe and Parker's champions, the blue and then the regular, the base auto, they're sticker autos. Okay. I can never say I have a hockey card that Gordie Howe signed. I can never say that. Yeah, mm. true. 
I never right? heard it that way. That makes sense. That's what it's that's what I my brain instantly thinks that way. Yeah, you I have, have a sheet a of card. paper, you have a yeah, sheet of stickers he signed with plastic <laughs> adhesive. Yeah, one of those stickers got put on your card. Yeah. Okay, next question from Proud Hughes fan. It's not, it's not a question. Just enjoying your content, especially the record or extraordinary sales you post. Oh, that was nice. Is this yeah. like your, I, I, Josh, is this your like side name? Proud Hughes yeah, fan? Proud Josh's <laughs> fan. He just changed it to Hughes. Yeah, it's his mom. <laughs> yeah, his mom wrote this in. No, this thank you. Again. Thank you for the kind words. We, we, thank we, you for we, the kind we, words. We try to make our posts interesting and informative. We're glad you enjoy them. And it, it is, hey, you know what? When you go out of your way to say something nice, like it puts a lot of juice in our batteries and yeah. I and we try to do it for others too because it means a lot so I really appreciate that yeah, all you I'm glad cynics you, out there I'm, I'm glad you like my villain. posts <laughs> all right Discord Cigar Scott have have you and Troy ever considered setting up at a local card show us oh. Americans complain about the lack of <laughs> hockey at card shows here but sometimes if you want something done you got to do it yourself <laughs> not to time. mention it would help us grow the hobby it'd be good for outreach well uh Scott we did <laughs> one time last september you can hear all about it on gong show 120 if you go back and listen at that and it was kind of a train wreck because troy brought two cards to sell number one and i brought a I lot remember. but i didn't want to sell any of them and so anytime I was, oh, um, i might be interested in this card i'm like i priced it 40 percent above cons because i don't want to sell it leave this Amazing. was basically my attitude. Amazing. You were the worst. And I, I learned, I'm glad we did it, that I don't want to be a seller of hockey. No, it sucks, right? It sucks. It's horrible. It's like you won't let go of the card. I want to buy hockey cards. Yeah. So and then yeah. Hoard them and yeah, enjoy yeah. them. You Great. have anything to add to that experience, Troy? Other than you know, it was dead on. Well, it you brought like so... a Debrink Cat Young Guns and something. I was like, <laughs> did, anyone, else I just... did anyone buy it? Anyone buy the Debrink? No, cat? of course not. No. Nah, and then like a month that, later, but... he started popping off a little bit. I will Here's say though, oh. I, I did trade for I think my favorite yeah. You got a great card. Yeah. What did you get, what'd you get Josh? What'd you get? The uh, oh, I got right here. Let's see. That's where I got this card. The Yager and Lemieux dual playing days on. Yeah, PSA Looks nine good. from uh, nineteen ninety nine tops premium plus. Very very cool. All right, Instagram top top shelf cookie sniper eighty eight. Do you think this series will help the game of hockey get attention from more non hockey fans? Also, other than Connor McDavid, whose card will be affected the most, either positively or negatively? Um, I don't know like how much this will grow the game, but I honestly think the biggest benefit of this series is Americans are finally getting a chance to see Connor McDavid play hockey. Yeah, man. You know, he we never get to see him play here. It's wild to me. Like yeah. the, the NBA, when they have a star like LeBron James, they put him on TV every in prime time, the most prime time constantly. The NHL doesn't seem to understand the concept of having like a generational superstar, like you watch this guy play and he's like skating circles around everyone else. And it's like, he would be fun to actually watch play occasionally NHL, maybe put him on TV here. It is peculiar how they're not like, it's, it, it, it's, it's getting to the point where it's odd. Is it not odd? They're yes. not selling the living crap out of this. Like, yes. it's, it's, oh, it's and, and they're doing it for Bedard. They are selling the, Dog's not, and yeah. I use that word all the time now. Out of kind of, and I don't know if it's because he's in an American market in Chicago, and Edmonton's just too like nobody knows where it is unless you're in Canada. Well, then show them where it is. Like I, yeah, yeah I don't know. It's, it's it's. I don't. It's, Troy, do you have a thought on this? Yeah, I think it's definitely helping. I don't know. I, I, I it does get Americans in, more into the game, but again, it's Florida. So that's like a smaller hockey market. I don't know if it would help if it was a bigger hockey market like the Rangers or anything. But anything, <laughs> any hockey growth in America is good. So let's just take the win, I guess. I like his uh, who whose other cards will be affected. You know what I just thought of? I don't think Dreisaitl, like let's say let's say Oilers win tomorrow and Dreisaitl pops in the winner. I still don't think in 10 years people are going to remember that. They're going to remember mm. Connor McDavid's the best player in the world. And he won a cup. And Josh will screw Josh. I have to remind us again what Dry has the most goals or whatever. Second most. No, goals. I, think, yeah. I think Matthews passed him in that. Oh, did Matthews pass him in the last? With his whatever. crazy. Season. I just don't yeah. see Leon's cards. I, I, he is cursed. He will forever be in, in, yeah. in McDavid. So he can win, the, he can score the winner tomorrow. I'm telling you, he can score it in overtime, win the Stanley Cup, 
they're only going to remember Connor. Mm-hmm. And that's as fun. far as like as who could pop off if Skinner outduels Bobrovsky and the Oilers win the cup. And this is not a long term take. This is a, this is like a two month take. Yeah, I think you could see a big run on Skinner cards. Yeah, and do not be part of the run. Yeah. <laughs> do not buy Grant Fuhrer bees. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Poor man's Grand Fury. <laughs> the poor man's Grand Fury is just good enough, barely. All right. So sometimes somebody sends a question, and I end up doing like two hours worth of work. <laughs> and this is one of them. I'm not going to do it every time, but I, I thought it was a really great question. And I want to know the answer. So, Instagram, it's freaking Polly time to ask us. He says, with gem rates on modern young guns being sub 50 and sometimes sub 40% with PSA. Have we looked at what gem rates are at places like Beckett? Beckett was once the home of hockey grading. And honestly, I think PSA just has a weird bias against hockey cards since they aren't all prism like. I've noticed all my shiny refractor type cards do well at PSA, but flagship mm-hmm. non glossy cards like SPA don't do well. So I was curious if BGS has higher gem rates. So I spent way too much time and I took the last four years releases, the kind of the top case for each. So we have Bedard, Beneers, this year, last year, Beneers, the year before Caulfield, and then Kaprizov. And I compared their gem rates from PSA to SGC to BGS. I don't know how to go over this without reading off 16 numbers and boring people, but I'd say the highlights are in almost every case, SGC has the lowest gem rates, so it appears that they are the toughest grader. Mm -hmm. PSA is middle, and BGS is the highest gem rates with maybe the the exception being Caulfield, where they're a little bit lower than SGC. The problem, though, with this is, and I get back to what I was talking about, like Beckett being relevant. When you look at the total number of cards graded, there's so many more of these are graded at PSA than yeah. than SGC or BGS that I, I don't really know. I, I, I So I did this list, and for anyone listening, it's not very helpful, but it's like I'll give like Bedard 40 5.6% PSA, 35% SGC, 62% BGS. Now that's kind of weird, right? That's yeah. a big it's like, difference, Josh. Like if you if you're listening, SGC is 35. It's almost BGS is almost double, almost double the gem rate of a Bedard YG to SGC. What that's does that mean? Weird. I don't know. Maybe it's just the specific cards that were sent there. Now you know the the, the other thing with gem mint and BGS that I, I've never been able to wrap my head around is. You have the 9.5 has, the, you could have min gems. So you could have three yeah. 9.5 subgrades, one nine, and then you could have true gem plus plus, where you could have two tens and two 9.5s. And th- that could be a big difference in the condition of cards. And so it almost seems like it's a wider band almost that the gem mint falls into a BGS. Yeah. So I don't know if that impacts gem rates, but yeah, I don't know. When you look at something like this, what do you guys take away from it? confusion <laughs> well i i feel the need now, for I, odd, the need for machine grading there. <laughs> yeah because yeah, yeah, well know. and there is a now some of them are pretty close like like veneers right 32 yeah. percent at psa 28 percent at sgc and 28 percent at bgs so that's like well at least this card feels like it's more consistently graded amongst others uh, and then you have like a presoft with 66 percent PSA down to 52% at SGC and six almost 70% at BGS. I guess the other takeaway is if you're looking for a 10 grade, uh SGC is going to be your toughest road to yeah. hoe there. Now maybe, may, maybe you could interpret this like saying if you want to be like in the flippy flipper game, buy SGC tens and grade yeah. them. Yeah. There you go. Nice, grade maybe. them at PSA. Yeah. Or 9.5. So, uh, Polly, I hope it answers your question. Uh, we'll probably do a social media post because I spent so much time on it yeah. too, but we'll see what people says. All right, last question. Turp Enforcer. He says, so if I was to have <laughs> one Bedard rookie card besides the Young Guns Gold Alpers 101, what should I go after? So I'll go first. And if, if we're talking like pie in the sky, Turp Enforcer, then I would want the Cup RPA Number 98 out of 99 that I'm assuming that that would be aim low, Josh aim low. (laughs) Yeah. But, but honestly, and I've said this before the the one Bedard rookie I really want is in my humble hockey budget is (laughs) the OPG marquee rookie 3d. I love those cards. The red one, eh? the red one there. 
Ah, uh, it's got kind of like an orange background. It's the lenticular one. Yeah, it's a lenticular. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lenticular? Like what does that mean? Oh, sport try, flex. Try, try, sport try flex. Okay. You uh you go first. They're, they're tough chases. Bill, which if you could have any Bedard rookie card other than the gold Elpers 101, which one do you choose? I would go, I'm call me old school, but I would go for a regular um I'm going to go realistic uh, opportunity here. I would go for a regular Connor Bedard Young Gun exclusive. So here's the that's it. Here's the or, or a high gloss, but that's out of my price range. But I think this I is the rookie I, I really want. Oh, that's not the one I. Th- oh, you like that card? Oh, I don't like that card. <laughs> I don't like that card at all. I thought it was the other one, the OPG Premier one. No. Yeah. Oh, no, this whole time I was chase. telling you I like your choice. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. <laughs> yeah, you suck. Suck less. I, I, and actually, the other uh, Troy, I want to get your opinion too, but I also really like. It. Along the lines, Phil, of realistic, the silver outburst. Yes, you got a picture of that. You know what that? Uh, one, the young gun silver. Oh, the silver, silver outburst. Yes, yes. So I would, <laughs> but I would want a numbered one out of two fifty. Oh, hold on. So you want the? That, that, no, that's deluxe. It's, the oh, I want outburst. a deluxe then. I want a deluxe. Because you can get the red out of twenty five, but we're getting out of realistic. Yeah, I don't want the twenty five. I like hundred. I like the exclusive. I thought there was a Bedard. I thought. I screwed huh? so I don't know what's going on. All right, Troy, which one would you have? I want the young guns acetate there. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh no, I want my now, have we oh we've seen it. Does he have bad hockey mouth in that one? Are, are you a ho- bad hockey mouth? Um does that oh, bother man. you as much? Look, this look is? who look at my second biggest PC is Brady Kachuk, Mr. Hockey Mouth. I'm screwed either way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my All right. God, no. Personal pickups. Oh god, we're pushing three hours. <laughs> That's crazy. I know the boys are waiting for me to make dinner. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, Phil, you get to go first. Uh, Troy, you want okay. to throw up Phil's pickups? Yes, sir. Look at that, baby. Look at that. Okay, so if you're watching uh, this morning at like 6 o'clock a.m., I pulled a Alex Ovechkin game used patch autograph, uh, Parker's Champions. I Man, I'm so happy. So that's obviously the case hit, uh, and it's number 22 out of 25. And I have a McDavid um, patch auto and a dry saddle patch auto. And they're both 22 out of 25. I don't know what it means. Um, but yeah, so I didn't even have to buy this card. I had to buy a case to get this card. So it's an expensive <laughs> yeah. card. But uh, I pulled it. <laughs> and it's not for sale. You scoundrel, stop DMing me. Okay. Okay. I have a couple questions about this. All right. Do you like how he signs these to like the far right? Or eh. does it bug you that it's not in the middle? Eh, it doesn't bother me. It's okay. He's got a really Just narrow very auto. quickly go yeah. through your of cards you pulled yourself out of Parker's <laughs> Champions. Like, what are your great? I, I feel like that you've had this, this is the product best, yeah. has been very, very nice to you. It's been very good to me. I've I've also given it a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> take that as you will. Um, so I'd say this is the best card. Isn't this the best card I've got? No, probably? you got you've got the Gretzky. I, I know better than you. You've got the Gretzky out of 10. Oh, that's right. Yeah, which started the whole, which was yeah. on uh, at Chateau Gong Show. Which yeah, I felt a little. Love. Yeah, Th- then you, you pulled that um, Austin Matthews. Pat, I know it's not your favorite. Oh but... yes, I sold that card too. I'm a seller. Call me a dealer. I sold mm. that card on my card post. Yeah, six fifty American. It was awesome, man. Great. You sold the. the you got this OV, and you've got like there's others too. Like, do you I got pull, like... uh, Chris Letang. I got him. Oh, you got a Hashik or Brodeur auto, didn't you? Oh, that's right. I got a Brodeur auto. Yeah, I got a Brodeur on. I got a Brodeur on card auto. That was at the um, show, right? The Montreal. A Slavkovsky. Yeah, I got the Slavkovsky, which yeah. I traded, which I traded for a, a Solani on card auto. Wait, is that yep. what I got? Is that what I got? Yeah, I don't I know. Think so. I need a and card Montreal, manager. Right? Yes, yeah. Trey. That's right. No, I trade. No, I traded him the Mitch Marner. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting confused. Yeah. Anyways, the, the set's been really good to me. Um, Dude, yeah, this I is what it. I get when I open yeah. box. Yeah, Quentin. <laughs> yeah, you get some um, orange card. I'm gonna show something real quick. You guys try to show us something. Well, show us something. I got two something. things to say. I'm I'm bitter because I, you guys are talking about the scotch tape, and this card came in the mail already, and it's got scotch tape on it. I'm <laughs> bitter now. It's I've already said I've already picked that up, but keep going, Phil. You got more. Okay, what else? I don't remember what else I said. You got to throw it out there, Trey. Oh, we got to hurry up. Like, I need to leave. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, let's go. I'll be quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so you I go. need your... Okay, sorry, Trey. I got to be a little bit longer. I need your <laughs> help. I don't... I'm sick and tired of saying, okay, guys, so what you're seeing on the screen is a 2003-2004 exquisite design. What What can I say to trigger everybody's um, 
um, brain to know what they're, they're just looking. exquisite tri tribute autos out of 25. Yeah. Of okay. Who? Oh, so we got Marcel Dion. We awesome. got Marcel Dion Jeez. and Billy Smith. Awesome. Great yeah. Cards. Billy Smith had Beautiful. a great auto. And they were, they were cheap. I think uh, Marcel Dion was like 110 bucks. Billy Smith was like 80. That's awesome. Yeah. Wait, wait till wait till next time you invite me on for week pickups. You guys will freak out. I bought one of my <laughs> best cards today ever, nice. ever. Nice. Yeah. All right, I'll go quickly. So now that Phil's pooped all over him, um, <laughs> I got picked up another 2021 22 Fleer Ultra Dry Saddle Gold Medallions out of 200. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> right, Phil. Don't worry about it. And then I picked up another Dry Saddle. A 2017-18 OPG playing cards, the foil. They did foil this year. So oh, it's nice. like three bucks. I don't care. I just think it's a cool card. And so yeah. I wanted it. Then I got a 1988-98-99 Pops Finest Yarmir Yager Refractor without the peel. Are, are, very quickly, are you peel or no peel? So. No peel. Or no, no I peel. peel. I peel. I peel it. Yeah, peel it. Okay. Yeah, I'm and no then, peel. I don't want peel. Yeah, yeah me too. And then what? the last card is 2013-14 Panini Select Pavel Bure Silver Prism. Ooh, good card, nice. Josh. That's your best card right there. I thought this was a good card. Yeah. All right. Uh, super Show is definitely super. Three hours. <laughs> um, hopefully you all enjoyed. If you liked the episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you listen to us on. If you love the show, you want to support us, you want to chat with us. On the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server, please consider a $5 donation. Join our at a $199 support level tier on Patreon. Link is in the show description. Uh, on podcast apps and YouTube and our Instagram, TikTok profiles. You can go to our website, HockeyCardsGongShow.com, and our TikTok profile. Uh, it's there as well. We are on social media. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube, and Troy and Phil. Yeah. Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a production of Dollar Box Ventures, LLC. We'll see you on Thursday. Super Show is now complete.